communications network that will greatly expand the reach of the program. The Daily News Service will also soon be producing three updated editions each day. The program has evolved from a one-man hobby operation to a full-fledged news service that contracts with writers and producers from their office in downtown San Marcos, Texas. John Bush is the founder. We've come a long way in the quality and depth of our content. I used to exhaust myself running the program solo. Since bringing on Derek Rose and Catherine Bleich as writers and Brian Hagen as our voice talent, we've been able to take it to the next level. With our new partnership with GCN, the sky is the limit. Now you can hear the Daily News Service on the Genesis Communications Network and many of their AM and FM affiliates. The Liberty Beat will be included at the top of every hour during Free Talk Live, the Catherine Albrecht Show, the Nutra Medical Report, and will also be downloadable via the GCN podcast feed. Documents released by The Intercept detail a cozy relationship between a former Los Angeles Times reporter and the CIA press staff. Email exchanges between Ken Delanian and the CIA public affairs officers show Delanian submitting drafts and summaries of his stories to the CIA before publishing. While relationships between government sources and reporters is nothing new, it's largely seen as a violation of journalistic ethics to seek government approval for stories. In the emails, Delanian can be seen asking if changes were better and more suited to the government officials' liking. Bob Drogan, the L.A. Times Deputy Bureau Chief and National Security Editor, said sharing story drafts is not appropriate. Delanian told The Intercept that seeking permission for stories was a bad idea and stated that he shouldn't have done it and would not do it now. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern-style burritos. Now with two locations in Austin at 500 East Ben White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. Find them online, CaboBob's.com. And support comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, September 8th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. Controversial water fluoridation was the topic. When activists from around the country met this past weekend in Washington, D.C. at the Fluoride Action Network Citizens Conference, Dr. Paul Connett, director of the Fluoride Action Network, will be in Central Texas this week to discuss the conference, sign books, and meet with elected officials to discuss the dangers of water fluoridation. Dr. Connett will first appear this Wednesday, September 10th, from 4 until 5 o'clock at a public meet and greet at the George Washington Carver Museum and Cultural Center. He will then give a speech at Brave New Books located at 1904 Guadalupe Street in Austin. The event starts at 7 o'clock. The third and final public event is a happy hour with Dr. Connett at the Rail Yard Bar and Grill in San Marcos, Texas. The event will happen Thursday from 5.30 until 7 p.m. Dr. Connett will speak at 6. William Binney, the former technical director of the National Security Agency, recently signed a petition calling for a new investigation into the attacks of September 11, 2001. Benny, who is also an NSA whistleblower, signed the Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth petition. Benny began whistleblowing on the NSA spying activities shortly after the 9-11 attacks and has remained a vocal critic of the Bush and Obama administrations. In 2005 and 2007, he became the focus of an investigation and harassment by the FBI. He was eventually absolved of any wrongdoings. New York City officials recently announced that 60 officers will begin wearing body cameras as part of a new pilot program. The program was part of a settlement reached in a lawsuit against the city's controversial stop and frisk program. Police Commissioner William J. Bratton believes the cameras demonstrate the department's commitment to transparency, and he expects the officers to begin wearing them this fall. And the Austin Unschooling Support Group monthly meeting is tonight, starting around 6.30 at the North Lamar Central Market location. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM, located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, September 8, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. North, an extremely vocal opponent of gay marriage, drew fire during his 2010 re-election campaign for saying that the legalization of gay marriage would lead to man-horse marriages. In one instance, he told the New Haven Register, quote, it's a slippery slope. If we allow two men to marry, what's next? Men marrying horses? But yesterday, North found himself at the center of a media firestorm when the New York Times published photos of North on what appears to be romantic outings with a horse. Gathered during the Times' two-month investigation, the pictures show North in almost a dozen locations with the same three-year-old mare. A former aide discovered links to numerous horse-related sites, including phillyfreaks.com and hothindquarters.com on North's work computer. 
The Times is accusing North of using federal funds to pay for luxurious trips, including a three-night stay at the high-end Sueños Stables in Catalonia, Spain, last month. North released a statement yesterday claiming he only spent time with the horse twice while conducting research for his anti-gay marriage project. This is the Onion News Network. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. We will take your calls. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting there for you. Uh, once again, that is freetalklive.com. The we in the studio is me, Ian. Derek J. And Mark. Hey, Derek J., you were in court this morning. I definitely want to talk about that. And then, How exciting. And then on the way, uh, well, I think a lot of our listeners are very interested in knowing, uh, Mark, what goes on. In, no, uh, you just seemed really excited the, about it, right? Like, oh, hey, okay. Derek, you, you were, were in court concerned. today. <laughs> Woohoo! Gotcha. Like, yeah. most people are like, oh, what a horrifying experience. You you look forward to this stuff. No, actually, I don't look forward to uh, no. to going to court. I, I, don't, I don't much like uh, going into courthouses. Uh, there's always men with guns there who are... In a lot of cases, threatening and unfriendly, and uh, no, I'd prefer to not go. I'd prefer to not spend my morning standing in a courtroom waiting for uh, some man in a robe to call my friend up to determine whether or not they. In this case, you weren't facing jail. You were uh, you were facing uh, the prospect of maybe having your rights actually respected. Yeah, uh, which is uh, all about your right to carry a firearm concealed. You were denied the what's they call the shall issue permit. Here in New Hampshire, and I've never seen a, an appeal of that denial. This is was a new kind of experience in court for me today, as it was, I imagine, for you as well, Derek J. Yes, uh, the idea was that I want the ability to. I, right now, I have the ability to carry a gun, any kind of gun, any number of guns mm -hmm. that I want. Here in New Hampshire, I can strap an AR-15 to my uh, back or an uh, AK-47 and walk them both down the street. That's totally fine. But if you were to conceal, <laughs> right? If I were to throw a jacket over those, uh, or if I were to put, say, uh, a tiny uh, pistol in my pocket, that would be a crime. And uh, I think that's a problem. So I need to be able to carry my gun, step into my car without uh, you know, unloading the magazine and checking the rounds. It seems dangerous uh, to you know, be fumbling with a gun that often you know, when, yeah, whenever sure. you get in and out of a car. So that's one of the requirements um, for traveling in a car with a gun in New Hampshire is you need to have one of these concealed carry licenses. So I said, I'll pay the 10 I have bucks. a car. Yeah. I have a gun. <laughs> yeah, so I'll pay the 10 bucks or whatever it is. Uh, it's a shall issue state, so they'll give it to me. But no, they said no. I can't have it because uh, the chief of police in Keene says mm -hmm. I have exhibited behavior that is assaultive or threatening. That's a well, lie. Well, that's interesting because I mean, I would think if you had assaulted someone, they'd charge you with criminal uh, criminal assault. I've never been charged with assault um or what threatening. What about criminal threatening? Nope. No. 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 Never been charged, never therefore been convicted of either of those things. No, no, of course right. not. Um, it's Where just, is this coming from? It seems to me like he just doesn't like me and yeah. just says like, oh, I have a little position of power over this guy, Derek, that I don't like. <laughs> well, I'll just say no. Yeah. I, w I won't give him his rights. Uh, because he to... has no personal liability for this, right? If, yeah, nothing if, bad is going to happen to him. If at the end of the day, and by the way, the trial thing or whatever we're going to call it, this the full hearing, hearing did not actually transpire today. We can get into that here in a moment. Yeah. But if at the end of the hearing you are indeed found... That you should have your right. Unsuitable. Honored. That, that yeah. would be, oh, no, suitable or unsuitable. That's what it's being okay. decided. Because, like, it's, it's, not a not guilty, it's not a guilty or not guilty. This isn't criminal. Well, with shall all. issue, it's very simple. Did you pay the 10 bucks? Mm -hmm. Did you fill out the form? Are you a felon or are you a domestic uh, partner beater? And I'm mm. none of those things, so it's shall issue. It should be done deal. Oh, yeah. oh, wait. There's this extra sub line where it says also if the chief of police or the issuing authority thinks you're not a suitable person, well then they can also 
also deny you. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's what this seems to be all about. It's, you know, they, he just says, well, you've exhibited assaultive or threatening behavior. And he could just say that. Yeah. And then I don't know what evidence they're relying and on. And it certainly it, seems like the prosecutor who is who is in there, they have the police prosecutor doing their defense for them on this. Yeah. Uh, it certainly seems like she she buys his story and she's acting as though you're some sort of menace to society up there. Yeah, that's sort of how she was acting today. Yeah. And that's what she was claiming. Um, they, she always gets in dispute. She, uh, it's this big, tall, blonde Amazon uh, God, lady. That's just here. not appropriate. What is, why, why not? You don't that just call somebody who's t- uh, some woman who's tall an Amazon. Why I'm not? Sorry. Isn't that an appropriate name no, for someone who's tall and no, uh, large as a, as a woman? No. Wonder Woman was an Amazon. Why not? Indeed, she is was. that an offensive thing to call yeah, somebody? Why is, why is it offensive? What's it's the just, problem with it? It's just not appropriate. Is it offensive to people from the Amazon? No, it's not offensive to people from the Amazon. It's offensive to just call, you know, just use names on people. It's not a name. It's a description. It's yeah. a description. So just like yeah. you, you, just like you would say somebody's heavy set or a or whatever or skinny. I think it's irrelevant. Okay, well, whatever. For people that uh, that see, I know you don't care about court, Mark, uh, but uh, a lot of our listeners are interested. They will watch uh, the, some of the court videos. In yeah. fact, uh, many people have watched Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree, which is a documentary film that you can go and watch for free right now over at victimlesscrimespree dot com. Now, most of that's not court footage. Court footage, for the most part, is boring. Uh, but on the other hand, there's a real sort of drama that's been playing out over the years here. I mean, this is a this is a continuation of the story of Derek J's victim. I would agree with that. Yeah. Because uh, Derek J, in the movie, you are denied then, back in 2012 or 2011. 2011. Yeah, way yeah. back then I applied for a, a concealed carry license The was reason was that you were a known drug user at that time is what they claimed. Well, no, that's just what one officer claimed, and he was just making that up on the spot. That's when I went to the police department to go find out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, what do you mean I was denied? What's this about? And he just said, well, aren't you some known drug user? And he just threw that out as some that was never written officially down that's anywhere cor- correct whereas this current no, the, one was written down the reason the for it? the uh official reason for denial before was that it was a bail condition mm-hmm. uh it was because i was out on bail that I, I wasn't allowed to possess a firearm it was just some little written in thing like you have to pay a thousand dollars oh and you can't have a firearm i was like oh i didn't mm-hmm. even notice that was one of my conditions of bail okay thanks judge burke for letting me know now uh I'll get rid of my guns <laughs> and so that's what it's been about. I've been trying to just ha- go through the process of asking permission, do it the mm. way I'm supposed to do it, and uh, every step of the way, they just keep saying no. Yeah, well, that's why they want you to ask permission. <laughs> they're they're yeah. all about that no. It's terrible. Uh, and, and so you've actually had to hire an attorney, and I know it is not cheap. I think you were trying to raise, what, $2,500 to cover the cost of the Yeah, I did attorney? put up the, the money uh, for the attorney. He's been generous with his time mm-hmm. and um, w- was very good about making it a, a flat fee. and you Instead know, of was, hourly? Yeah. Which that helps get, a lot because it, you never know if you're going to pay an attorney hourly what the total is going to well, be. We were sitting day. in the courtroom today for three hours. You yeah. know, I mean, that's just racking up the time. If, if, uh, you know, if right. it weren't someone who just cared about the issues and and wanted to uh, you know win because the issue is important. Yeah, you would have paid any other attorney, you know, 900 bucks for 3 hours in court. Right, but I think this one's important because it's about like it, it seems to be about my activism. This is the reason that they're denying me. There would be no other reason for the chief of police to say I'm a Seems pretty clear to me. It's, yeah. it's just like, oh, we Absolutely. don't like what he does. It's he exercises his first amendment, so now he loses his second amendment. I mean, that's what it seems to be. Uh, they they don't. No, I'm not an amendments guy, but mm-hmm. I made political statements, and that would qualify as being First Amendment. So, does that mean that people who make political statements lose their Second Amendment? I don't get it. I have to say, um, you know, as far as what we were talking about earlier, I am interested to see how this trial pans out. Um, Same here. I'm not excited to walk into court, Mark. I don't like to be in court, but I do like it when people stand up for themselves in court, and I want to do what I can to support that. So that's why I was there this morning, bright and early, with you. It was 8.30. This thing was scheduled to get rolling. Yeah. And uh, there There were a a handful of other activists there, too. true. It was so encouraging to see. And this wouldn't happen anywhere else. I wouldn't have challenged this in New Jersey, for example, where I'm from. Because Can, could you? I mean, no. is there a shall issue permit in New Jersey? But, yeah, but your lawyer actually is handling a New Jersey case. Too. Yeah, yeah, he is. But uh, no, I think it's May issue there. But yeah. the, um, the, <laughs> the the case is that you can't bring video cameras into courtrooms almost anywhere mm-hmm. that I know of. But here in New Hampshire, we had you two know, of them today. Yeah, I walked in with my camera. You had yours. Mm-hmm. Anyone could have walked in with their own camera, and they probably wouldn't have gotten bothered. 
Um, yeah, we're pretty uh, we're pretty old hat at doing cameras in the courtroom up here. Like it's it's almost an ex- expectation. But that's they know a big we're deal. Be there. Yeah. That's a big deal for other places where you don't mm-hmm. have any transparency. So at least people are able to see what happens. Yeah, and and that's why I think what we're doing here is so valuable. And you know, I'm sorry. I, it sounded like you were downing it earlier, Mark. And I don't know if that was your intention. No, but, what uh, I was saying um, was a that uh, you seemed really excited to go and be. You called somebody an Amazon for no good reason. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Judge well, Burke said he liked me. That yeah, happened. That's true. I don't think he likes the Amazon woman. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can take control. It's not like I'm calling her a gypsy or something offensive. <laughs> this is Free Talk Live. Attention. Renew is currently seeking participants who are dealing with stress and unhappiness. If you are experiencing one or more of the following symptoms, you are eligible to participate in the trial and receive a free two-week supply of the mood-boosting supplement, Renew. To be eligible, your symptoms may include fatigue, hopelessness, tension, negative mood, anxiety, or lack of sleep. Renew is an all-natural, doctor-recommended supplement that will help boost your mood and give you more energy right away. Renew has been featured on Oprah and The View and has already helped over a million people feel better naturally. Now you are eligible to participate in the free trial if you or someone you know are experiencing symptoms of stress and unhappiness. Call now to participate in the trial and receive a free two-week supply of Renew. To participate in the Renew trial and get a free supply, call 1-800-553-7444. 1-800-553-7444. Call 1-800-553-7444. 1-800-553-7444. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. Ms. Maxwell's local council has decided that the pool, which is only two feet deep, needs a lifeguard. It's a kiddie pool. As if the (laughs) lifeguard wasn't enough. She's also been told she must have insurance. The health and safety edict came after she wrote to the city council asking for permission to put a bigger pool in the communal garden outside her home. Ah, that was her mistake, asking for permission rather than forgiveness. But nonetheless, not only was she told it was too dangerous, but the council told her to empty the existing pool. The Portsmouth manager defended the ruling yesterday. Nigel Selly said, We didn't have sufficient assurances that the risks associated with providing such a facility would be well managed. It's a facility. How dare you? How dare you erect this structure on your property? It's an inflatable pool. Without our permission. Free talk live seven nights a week from 7 to 10 eastern live on the liberty radio network at lrn.fm if you want to know the latest about free talk live before we go on the air all you need to decide is how you want it delivered it's your choice visit news.freetalklive.com you can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list plus we have a twitter account that you can follow and a facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free and bring up anything right here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Send a contact request first. It will be approved, and it will be easy for you from that point forward to call us on Skype. And you will sound better, typically, than if you call us on the phones. Anyway, we're here to take your calls about whatever's on your mind. Of course, we're talking about Derek J. in court this morning, the continuation of the uh, victimless crime spree. Actually, not a crime uh, involving a victim at all. Here was what the question was, but uh, it was a continuation of his movie, Victimless Crime Spree, because the first time Derek J. was denied a right to carry a firearm, denied his right, uh, in this case, the permit that is supposed to be a shall-issue permit in New Hampshire to concealed carry. You can walk around open carrying, no problem. But uh, in New Hampshire, but a concealed carry, uh, the police department here not is so saying much. that he is not suitable uh, to be able to concealed carry a weapon because he's a psychomaniac. Well, they didn't use those. <laughs> they didn't use those terms, but almost that sounds very similar to what they did say about you. I don't know exactly what what did they say. I don't think they. I mean, all they said on paper was that I have exhibited uh, behavior that is assaultive or threatening. Yeah, sounds like a crazy person to me. Yeah, I guess so. So they uh, they've they've done, denied you and you've appealed. Now uh, we're going to get back into some of the details about that here in moments. Your thoughts uh, calls are certainly welcome. Eight fifty five four fifty freeze the toll free number and Express Coin is the best place to go to get yourself bitcoins as well as other alternative currencies such as Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, and Darkcoin. So go and check out ExpressCoin.com. they got great customer service, and you can order with money order, check, wire transfer, even cash deposit. And you can do it all by starting off over at ExpressCoin.com. Now, uh, Derek J. has been spending the last year plus of his life using only Bitcoin to live. Yay! So this is an amazing thing. And in fact, there's some Bitcoin-related news, at least uh, headlines, how true they are. I don't know about PayPal slash eBay. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll get a chance to talk about that. But now is probably a good time to get in on some Bitcoin, considering the price has been down over the last few weeks over what it was I was recently. watching uh, the prices today. I figured, you know, this kind of news is just going to skyrocket the price. Nothing's really changed today, so... I've, you know, you can't really count on news to change the price of something that's as international as Bitcoin. You can count on it to company. change uh, the, the price of thing, stocks like Google. Hmm. Well, Bitcoin's bigger than a stock. Bitcoin is a lot bigger than a stock. Not every stock. All right, so go to ExpressCoin.com, get yourself some Bitcoin there, and by the way, if you use our discount code FTL, that's FTL like Free Talk Live, order up to $40 worth of Bitcoin or any of those other coins for free, meaning no transfer charge at ExpressCoin.com. All right, so uh, in court today, there were several activists who came out to to show support for you. The mm-hmm. court was otherwise busy. They, of course, ran through the rest of the cases in the court, basically, with the exception yeah. of one or two people. Yeah, there was a guy who failed to register his dog, get his dog a, a oh, license God. here oh, in Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, was so he, he didn't pay the $40 fine or mm-hmm. f- whatever for getting his dog registered in Keene. What, did he get the guillotine? His dog is dead. Oh, this was the worst part about what happened up there. Oh, they don't so care. Awful. They want their money. This was the worst part about what happened up there, just obviously an aside from your case. But, yeah, this is one of the guys who was on before you. And what they were doing this morning, for the most part, were arraignments where, you know, arraignment is where somebody comes in. They usually plead guilty or not guilty. But in most cases, they will just plead guilty and pay the fine or pay mm-hmm. the fee. And, of course, we have a don't-take-the-plea-deal outreach here, which encourages people to not take the plea deal and instead to go to trial, as you have done, Derek J., and many other activists have, as I will be doing in about 10 days from today for some ridiculous identification-related so-called crimes. But this guy was actually – I heard him talking because I was sitting nearby him in the courtroom, so I heard him chatting with one of his friends in the courtroom. and So I knew before he came up there that he was there on the unregistered dog Mm -hmm. charge, (laughs) and I had heard him tell this guy that the dog is dead. And so, therefore, you'd think that you'd be able to get out of something like that, right? Like if, if you'd think, you know, if you go to trial and you present evidence that the dog is in fact dead, uh, then they would not be able to assess the fine. Whoa, onto whoa, whoa! You. When did the dog die? <laughs> you know, that's... Well, maybe it would come down to that. I don't know, but it sounded like initially he was going to not take the plea. And this mm-hmm. was revealed in his appearance up in front of the court. His initial talk with the prosecutor was that he wasn't going to plead guilty. Because well, his dog was dead, and so therefore, how could he possibly owe the money on on this fine? But right. 
ultimately, when he finally got up there to the defendant's table, the pressure of court, you know, was weighing down on him. And nobody wants to go back and sit in in court for another three hours waiting to actually have their case called. Right, because this guy had to wait about two hours to yeah. be called. So I'm sure he's thinking about it, mulling it over in his mind while he's waiting, saying, why don't I just pay the $40? That's what he did. I won't have to come back here again. He got up there. He told him, well, uh, he sort of was like, eh, up on the stage. The you know the the stage if you will the court uh, that he wasn't real sure and then he just went ah screw it you know I'll just pay the thing what do I owe you you know that kind of thing and then owe they, you yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so. you don't owe them anything they're a bunch of thieves how much money to get you stinking thieves off my back well he was oh saying, I'm sorry is that contempt for the court because I've got nothing but contempt for you people my dog's dead and you want money for a license for it yeah. I'll tell you what your honor. I'll give you the money for the dog if you put the tag on its neck. You oh. go and you bury Fluffy and you put the tag on its neck. I'll pay for it just to watch. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's disgusting. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> Oh, I feel I felt so, really bad for the guy. It's awful. Gonna, he, it looked like he was going to cry. Yeah, that sucks, um, man. You don't want to get up there and think about your dead dog. That's well, not cool. Besides that, they added an extra fee. He was ready to pay $40 or I whatever it was. I thought Burke reduced it or something like that. No, they added $4. Like, <laughs> like it wasn't petty enough that yeah. he was up there for a dead dog. Wow. They added $4 to his fine. It really I don't matters. know the specifics yeah. of this, but I mean, I almost have a difficult time believing that Burke would have done this. I really do. Like, I thought they this- reduced it from 40 bucks to $25. Maybe I just wasn't paying close enough attention. Uh, I thought it was 40 to 44 I thought they increased it, but we'll see. Well, the video will come out. Yeah. One example was of so yet petty. another victim in the, of the court system. Yeah. Um, the, also, they uh, were trying to determine what would be the proper remedy because the court failed to schedule the hearing in time. Hold like, on. We're talking about your trial, your hearing now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Excuse me. So, um, yeah. So that's basically was the thrust of court today instead of actually going right. to the, the full hearing about your rights and uh, the gun thing and being able to carry concealed and why they denied you that. Uh, that's, that will be coming in the future. Now the court is trying to figure out how to punish itself Right. For, uh, <laughs> for not following the statutes because a flagellation. A- according to the statutes uh, in New Hampshire, they put very specific time frames on, okay, you got denied, you filed this appeal of the denial, uh, and then after you file that appeal, there's supposed to be a very short window, like a two-week window of time where mm-hmm. they're supposed to very quickly schedule this hearing because – well, gosh darn it, this is about your rights, and this should be an important hearing, so therefore it should be scheduled quickly is supposed to be the idea. But they dropped the ball, and they didn't schedule the hearing in time. Whoops, they forgot, and Judge Burke admitted that. He said, it's not in dispute. We were, you know, we just forgot. We didn't meet the deadline. Now we have to determine, we have to stop everything. We can't yeah. really continue with this trial. <laughs> we have to, or hearing rather, we have to determine how to punish ourselves. What will the proper remedy be? And he's asking the attorneys... What he should do to himself, basically, or mm-hmm. to the court. <laughs> Anyone a clue? And, Any clue uh, here? So now the attorneys have to file memos, l- memorandums of law with the court about this, advising the court of what the appropriate thing to do is. So instead of actually I having say your fire. Hero, have your uh, have your attorneys. <laughs> We're coming back. It's free talk live. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people, like when the jeweler ruined my ring and wouldn't do anything about it. But when my Legal Shield attorney called him and told him what my rights were, I received a check for over $2,100. Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. Again, 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. We've been patiently waiting, waiting while you tried to ignore us, waiting while you acted like we didn't exist, waiting for our chance to be taken seriously. The wait is over. GCN is available 24-7 at GCNlive.com. Navigate through news from your favorite hosts and download archives of past shows. Download the app on your smartphone or tablet or visit GCNlive.com for instant access and live streaming. GCNlive.com, the future of talk radio, now at your fingertips. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? 
take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. Call right now. 800-208-5187. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You may take control of the airwaves here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. Joining you tonight, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Go check out more Derek J. over on his website, derekj.me. He's more uh, more than just a movie man. Yes, he appeared in Derek J.'s Victimless Crime Spree, which you can watch for, for free through his website, derekj.me. But you're also... A prolific audio content producer, I would say, uh, being the host of more shows than I can recall yeah. off the top of my head. Your yeah. show, Peace, Peace News, News Now, Now Bitcoin, Bitcoin Talk, Talk, show. Talk Show. You fill in regularly for Angel, Angel Clark, Clark Show. You're a guest uh, co-host, one of the regular co- co-hosts. There's like a dozen of them, so you're one of them on right. Freedom Fiends. Yeah, and, and I also do on here. Fridays. on Fridays I do another show called The Bitcoin Group. Which is like a. Uh, Are you a contributor to that show? Or is the that McLaughlin Group? Is that one of your shows? I'm a contributor to that show. Okay. But it's a, it's a regular um, guest 
um, pa- of panelists. So people can check that all out on YouTube. Or the easiest place to find all of it is at DerekJ.me. DerekJ.me. Go and get more Derek J there. Most of it totally free, but people can contribute. All of uh, it's free, to- but people can, yeah, they can reward me with Bitcoin donations only. I don't take any of those blood dollars. Wait a minute. You're taking blood dollars on GoFundMe.com. Oh, you're right. Slash gun rights <laughs> because your lawyer is taking blood dollars. That's are you paying right. him in Bitcoin or are you paying him with, with cash? I paid in blood dollars. Did you ask about Bitcoin? Yes, he accepts. Uh, he accepts. No, not Bitcoin yet, but uh, silver. He takes metals and ah, interesting okay. trades, but uh, not into not the there Bitcoin yet. yet. Yeah. All right. So you've hired the renowned, the most renowned gun rights attorney in New Hampshire, New Jersey, from what I understand. Yeah, he may be uh, Evan Knappen. <laughs> he may be in, like the Northeast. Yeah, this guy's a big deal, and he uh, he's helping you with this case. You were denied your right to carry a firearm concealed by the mm-hmm. Keene Police Department by the chief himself. Kenny, Kenny Miola, Aww. and uh, he. This is the, by the way, for the for longtime listeners of the show. This is the very same police chief who refuses to make eye contact with me or acknowledge that I exist in any way, shape, or form. He did the same today. Was he doing that with you today? Yeah, I was trying to like smile because I mm-hmm. waved and smiled at the other uh, police officers who were in the room. They were in plain sure. clothes, and uh, I was even complimented by one Jason Short who arrested me once upon a time. He said, <laughs> "You always wear the nicest suits." And I was like, "Oh, that's that's so sweet of you." I don't know say. if you were aware of this, but I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we dress. Are you yeah. suggesting Jason Short? is gay no 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 he's saying me. i know yeah well uh yeah but the peliquin all the other police they're very friendly they'll say hello mm-hmm. but oh, yeah. um this chief of police ken miola he won't even make eye contact it's very i find it very childish especially from someone whose supposed job it is to be accountable to the people you know here in new hampshire there's uh article eight i think of the new hampshire constitution maybe it's article five i don't know it's one of those one of those two that says that the government bureaucrats are supposed to be open they're supposed to be accountable they're supposed to be you know people you should be able to approach and get on the record get them to talk to you regardless of what the words on paper say it's just being a part of being a human being you're in the same room together for three hours and oh by the way you're part of the same case. You're in the same hearing. Yeah. Like, we've got business together, Ken. <laughs> Why don't you this look guy, at me in the eye? He's ridiculous. So uh, that's always a good challenge for a new activist in Keene. See if you can get the police chief to talk to you and for how long. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, we uh, again, we came out to court to support you today. The actual hearing will be put off until who knows how long. So the funny thing was they missed their deadline. This whole hearing today was put off supposedly illegally the yeah. court doesn't know what to do because there's no actual uh, I, I think there was a men- mention today that there was no actual specific punishment for the court like there's no mm-hmm. uh even though it's not they're not supposed to break their own rules if they do break their own rules there's no mechanism to do anything about that apparently. right right so, so this is, the funny part about this is is it's not like the uh the party calling itself the state of new hampshire which, of course, the state of New Hampshire pays the paychecks of everybody who works at the court. Right. But right, regardless of that, the, the party calling itself the state of New Hampshire isn't the one that's in the wrong here. So in this adversarial system, it's pretty obvious what they could do to one side is, is they could, you know, dock them in their case some way. And they could just say, look, you weren't uh, fast enough or you didn't do this in the right time, so he gets his uh, his right to carry a concealed weapon. But what you're pointing out is <clears throat> that it was the city of Keene who they were on time that was the court that dropped the ball with the scheduling. Yes. Right. So the other so party wasn't at fault. If, you know, in a game, how do you dock the referee? <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense. I mean, yes, the referee is clearly on one side or the other, but the referee won't say that. He won't say, well, of course, I work for the state of New Hampshire and you people the state of New Hampshire and this is really just some kind of stupid show trial. Um, so we will I will dock the state of New Hampshire. He can't do that Mm -hmm. because that sort of blows a lid off of the whole thing that they do. And I think that to some extent they do try to be as impartial as they can. I just don't think that the system itself lends itself to impartiality. Sure. Well, he had to appear extra impartial today because (laughs) my attorney complimented you. Yeah, he said he liked me, and I was touched. He, um, my attorney filed a motion for recusal or change of venue, and that means that he was saying, "Hey, judge, I think you're biased, Mm -hmm. or your courtroom is biased, and we want a new courtroom and a new judge." And Judge Burke said, "No." And that, that absolutely, anybody who asks for that should be able to get it. No, if it for never, whatever it's never going to happen. You think you aren't going to get a fair trial? I don't. Everybody's th- going to say that about a judge they've been in front of before. 
I don't see any reason why they shouldn't be able to get it. The reason why would be event if you were busy, and I'm kind of recapping what Burke said, you know, he sees the same people all the time in that court. It's not unusual for Burke to see the same person over and over again. A lot of people keep having the same problems in life, and they end up in front of the same judge. If they could just ask for a new judge every time they had a trial, they'd quickly run out of every single judge in New Hampshire <laughs> right. at that point. Um, so it's just it's not going to work that way. Um, I, it, see, it seems to me that in a, uh, in a system where you're supposed to be where you're the state is providing you with the referee mm -hmm. and you don't feel like you're going to get a fair you know go from the referee and they've already screwed up yeah. they've <laughs> already screwed up and they don't know how to punish themselves i mean they could have avoided the whole problem by just passing it to a different court they would have said oh that last court screwed up here mm -hmm. here's your license i don't know so he complimented you after oh, yeah. uh, the, the, so the attorney had rebrought up his motion. The motion was originally denied, but the attorney, your attorney, wanted to get it on the record in court of uh, the denial. And that was when Burke sort of explained himself that, you know, he was impressed with your ability to defend yourself the he last time you were in court. He remembered that I defended myself in the mm -hmm. Live Free or Die trial, the, which is the one uh, where in I was, your movie. Yeah, which is in Victimless Crime Spree. Uh, and he complimented me at the end of that, saying, "Oh, you did a good job." And That's I always right. thought he was just not serious because he no, found I felt me guilty. It was genuine. But I, he found me guilty on all three charges. Right. If you're saying good job, I mean, th throw me a bone, man. Give me something. <laughs> good job. Uh, you know, if I, I really know. did a good job, I would have won. You know, but he he found me guilty on all three charges. His so claim was maybe he was he was, was genuine. You didn't have the facts in your corner. That's what he said. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you did a good job. You didn't have the evidence, but yeah. uh, good job <laughs> anyway. Well, okay. So I felt I felt I know I remember that moment too, and I, I felt he was genuine in that moment. I felt he was genuine today. I, I, I really did, did too. I was shocked. You know, it's nice to see a guy who I see is like, uh, you know, he puts away all kinds of peaceful people. That mm -hmm. guy with the dog license. I'm saying, oh man, can't you have a Give heart? Give it up, buddy. And then. Yeah. You know, and then he comes to me and he's like, oh, I know Mr. Horton. I, I like him or something. He said right. I like him. I was like, mm. wow. Yeah. I, it's amazing how one can sort of feel this way. I, I feel the same way, <laughs> the same sort of servile uh, feeling towards Judge, Judge Burke that you're talking about, too. I like the tax assessor in my town. I mean, <laughs> this is the, the way that you can feel about these, because these are real live human beings, you know? I yeah. mean, the, it's easy to sort of vilify them like in the movie, you know? Right. Uh, guilty. Well, I think right. that's. I think that uh, is something that is unique. I don't know if it's that unique, but it's something special to New Hampshire at least because it's such a small place. Judge Burke is the only district court judge in <laughs> you know in Keene, and uh, in in some places, Manhattan or wherever, there's probably 50 district courts or something mm -hmm. crazy like that, or one district court with 50 courtrooms in it or something. Uh, so you know, here you you kind of you can help but create relationships with the people inside the state and they become less monstrous as a result of that and more like humans who are just doing the wrong thing they're just yeah for whatever reason their incentives in life uh don't encourage them to do the right thing and i hopefully we'll see that change someday toll free number tonight 855 450 free more coming up on free talk live oh fall a time for cooler temperatures and hot deals from America's Best Value Inn. Save 15% when you book a room online at americasbestvalueinn.com and stay now through October 23rd. Plus, you'll enjoy free continental breakfast, internet, and instant rewards through our Value Club at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Fall into savings this season at America's Best Value Inn. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. 
Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time. Perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time-consuming expensive office visits? No. No. And No-No. For a limited time, you can try No-No Pro risk-free. You'll also get the facial kit and a travel case. Get weeks of long-lasting results. That's it. I'm getting a No-No. Great minds do think alike. <laughs> <laughs> Try NoNo Pro risk free by calling 800 952 5760. 800 952 5760. That's 800 952 5760. 800 952 5760. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your AMP will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. It's Free Talk Live here to take your calls about anything. I'm Ian. I'm Derek J. And I'm Mark. And we have a website. You go to freetalklive.com. You may get interactive there. It's uh, it's a Reddit-based front page where we've got news stories and maybe blog posts or YouTube videos, whatever content you decide to add to the website. Or you can vote on the stuff that's already there. So you vote up what you like, vote down what you don't. It's all free, so go to freetalklive.com. Now, if you need focus and are feeling fatigued and trying to get that extra edge when it counts, look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about how modafinil from modup.net is making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge they need. Over at modup.net, they make it affordable for you to take advantage of the benefits of modafinil by being 80 to 85% lower in price than the brand name. Now, don't mistake prices, low prices, that is, for an inferior quality. They ensure that purity and potency are consistent to that of the branded version. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Modup.net is also a supporter of the Bitcoin community. They're taking Bitcoin, and if you pay with Bitcoin, you'll get a 33% discount at modup.net. And to make the deal even better, use code FTL, like Free Talk Live, and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. That's code FTL at modup.net for world-class service at a great price for modafinil. Modup, M-O-D-U-P, dot net. And again, code FTL. 
So we've been talking in uh, in detail about what was a relatively short hearing this morning, uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes or something mm-hmm. like that, uh, where ultimately your gun rights were not on uh, on on they were not heard. The uh, the trial did not move forward. Uh, th- that will be happening, I presume, about a month from now or longer at this point, because the attorneys now have to file more papers with the court to just to advise the court on how to handle its own mistake of not scheduling the thing in enough time. So not only did the court not schedule your hearing about your gun rights, Derek J., within the legal time frame to schedule it, uh, but now that they haven't scheduled it within the legal time frame, they need to take more time to figure out what to do about them not scheduling it within the legal time frame. So instead of getting your hearing in any sort of speedy manner, as a result of their mistake, it's now taking weeks longer to actually have the hearing happen. So you you will continue to be deprived of your right to conceal carry. Well, if I'm not willing to engage in some civil disobedience. This is true. It's only a Class A misdemeanor here in New Hampshire, which is a pretty small... um, It's up to a year in jail. Yeah, well, okay, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Considering some of the things that happen during victimless crime spree... That's true. You were facing nine years at that point. Yeah, one small charge of uh, carrying a weapon concealed when I'm in the process of getting my concealed carry license anyway wouldn't seem to be too bad. So did you feel like there was anything that we left out of the story from this morning? No, I think that that fully covers it. There will be video at freekeen.com tonight. Which I haven't... uh, That's your video, right? You're going to be putting up? Because I've got video footage too, but I haven't even had a chance to ingest any of it i've been actually i I basically left the trial this morning uh and went straight to the college campus Mm. where i then proceeded to spend the entire afternoon uh essentially handing out flyers for the james cleveland campaign who is uh he's robin hood for those of you who've been longtime listeners of the show robin hooding has been some of the most controversial and also uh, popular activism that has happened in Keene, where people are on the streets regularly saving folks from getting parking tickets by depositing change in expired meters before the parking enforcer can reach the cars. And that's kind of who James is known for as far as activism. He has been running for state representative with what I have described as the most fun uh, political campaign that I've ever ever in, been involved in it seems like the most um patronizing to me but um I, <laughs> I, I, you know like he his his target essentially is college students and his platform is getting crunk <laughs> he doesn't walk around the streets crunk no no he, he just promotes uh crunkenness he's not no. advertising crunkenness having a, no. what's having the, a what's good, piece of paper say having says, a good time shouldn't be a crime exactly and that that's true slogan and People so, can relate to that. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, he's running in a college district here in Keene, and the idea is like, look, let's see if we can get these college kids to come out and actually vote. I don't know if they can. I don't know Yolo if they will. Yolo swag four twenty blaze it. <laughs> I'm just reading the things here that are on the. That That's I can what see. the haters say. That's what. Okay, Mark. So let me give you a little uh, recap here. Oh, I see. And once I've uh, un- unearthed your duplicity, so uh, I don't know what you're talking about there. But anyway, James is running for office, and we've been flyering the campus pretty heavily with information about him and encouraging folks to come out and vote for him. And uh, one of the folks from StopFreeKeen.com got their whole, got their paws on one of the flyers because they work at the college in the cafeteria. And uh, they took snapshots of it and they posted this thing about <laughs> how James Cleveland campaign platform, uh, for, what, was, what was it again? That was uh, 420 YOLO. Oh, yeah. Legalizing- YOLO. Uh, YOLO swag 420 blaze it all in caps was what they said his campaign that was kind of their summation of his campaign literature and I just thought it was so hilarious and so did a lot of the other folks involved with the campaign so now we've got like a profile picture I've changed my profile picture on Facebook to a picture of James with uh, with YOLO swag 420 I don't even know blaze y- what it YOLO means written over the top YOLO stands for you only live once I see uh, and then I was told what swag means. Swag means stuff we all get, apparently. That was a new one. I don't know. Uh, yeah, t- I don't to know me. that one either. I hadn't heard that one before. James is an accountant. It's worth, <laughs> yeah. it's worth mentioning this. An accountant running for office with uh, his platforms, a little check marks next to it. Legalize marijuana, lower drinking age to 18, bars stay open longer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> check. Now tell me that's I mean, that's patronizing i don't care that it is how is it patronizing i think you do need to patronize to uh college students in order to get them to do something oh yeah i can vote now 
That's yeah. how is that patronizing to give somebody what they want? I mean, isn't patronizing normally like if it, when I think of patronizing, I think of one politician up here who uh, is whenever you talk to her, if she's if she's in campaign season, she'll talk to the little people. And uh, when she talks to people, she always does this thing where you'll be talking, you'll sit, whoever's talking will be saying something and she'll go, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. I find that patronizing to me. It just yeah. seems like, you know, I, I, and I don't have the exact definition of patronizing. It's not quite I condescending. Have it right here. Treat a person with apparent kindness, and that, um, but betray them with a feeling of su- superiority. There you go. So I think that that fits the the, uh, the suggestion because James. I don't is think James is saying superior. he's superior to he's anybody. Not running on that platform, he's running on a platform of it's like what he doesn't say here is he's not running on a platform of gut conquered. <laughs> you know, disempower the politicians. <laughs> <laughs> Get your money back from these thieves. Like that yeah, would be that wouldn't those fly real with the co- college students. I know it wouldn't. Real- <laughs> those are so, Hence oh, the oh, term oh. patronizing. Those are also aren't even realistic proposals at this point. I mean, he's not going to be able to put forth. Uh, he's not going to be able to get the gonna... bars to stay open longer either. What's I there believe was actually this legislation point, that did recently uh, result in bars staying open longer. I in New know. Hampshire. So they that, that platform that platform leg doesn't have anything to stand on. Oh, sure it does. It's already um, done. No, it could the be modified. Now, more. he's it not be, running for a city position. It's a city issue. It could be modified to where the cities can no longer control that, and bars could be able to make their own decisions about that kind of thing. Yeah. So and there are some things that could wouldn't be Wouldn't it be there. cool to see New Hampshire be the only state with the 18 year old drinking age? I mean, would be think amazing. of the um, revenue that like hotels and all the places would get from college kids oh, yeah. all wanting to come to new hampshire now <laughs> no doubt it, it would be a boon for the state i well actually what i proposed to to james is that if he actually were to get in that he propose it be 16 uh because, all right well because the legal age of consent in new hampshire is 16 and so why shouldn't it all be set at this you know this the same age and at least at the very you know in that case politics is usually a result of compromise so push further than what you know you're yes. hoping to get go for 16 and then maybe they'll meet you in the middle at 18 is kind of the idea that makes some sense it, so, although when you bring it down to 16 now i'm tempted to say just get rid of the whole well, thing yeah absolutely i think that would be a, a thing to do as well and, and maybe we'll see things like that happening as more liberty activists move here as part of the free state project which by the way just crossed sixteen thousand, from what i understand sixteen thousand signers so congratulations to the free state project the idea of course there is let's get liberty activists to move to the same physical place not all in Keene, new hampshire but across all of New Hampshire and get people to come here and, and get active. And we're seeing that happen in a way that uh, liberty activists here are having an impact that no one else can. As you said earlier, Derek Jay, you wouldn't have had the support in court if you were still in New Jersey or, or, or maybe Philly. Philly has a lot of activists. Yeah, you might have some pulled some support. Would have Philly. come out in Philly. We get support there. Uh, but as you said, you would have been able to bring a camera in. You know, there's a lot of things that you wouldn't be able to do there that you can already do here. Oh, I've tried. Yeah, I've tried to bring cameras in. They kicked me right out. Wow. I mean, it's a t- night and day, the transparency that you get in New Hampshire and anywhere else. So it's been a busy day. I mean, it, just, it wasn't just your court hearing that was the activism That's today. Right. Out before the court hearing, I was doing Don't Take a Plea Deal outreach. Then later, I gave out hundreds of flyers to college students. And now, while we're on the air, there are other people, James Cleveland included, who've gone to the college to the very first Keen Cannabis Coalition meeting. So just in one day, there's like five different things uh, that can be done. The toll-free number, it's an, it's an amazing thing. You can, of course, follow along with a lot of the activism seen here by watching the blog over at freekeen.com. And Derek said that's where the footage from the trial is going to pop up. Uh, so more coming up here. Hour two's on the way. We'll talk about the pledge coming up. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade-grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com.
Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, September 8, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.23 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,267 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $469. Antiwar.com reports, Iraqi Prime Minister designate Hadir al-Abadi has submitted his proposed cabinet to the parliament, beating the September 10th deadline for submitting such a list as required under Iraqi law. The cabinet list has not been made public, but is expected to include both Sunni Arabs and Kurds in an attempt to try to form a unity government. Whether he's actually got the support of either the Sunni Arabs or the Kurds remains totally unclear. So while some reports suggest a tentative plan to hold an election as early as Monday on the cabinet, the date of the vote could easily slip to allow a body to try to assemble more support. Most of the details of the negotiations, as with the assembling of the cabinet itself, have been conducted in private, and that makes it hard to tell exactly where everyone is at on the plan. Kurdish officials, however, made clear that their part of the negotiations have effectively stalled. In addition to disputes over oil revenue sharing dating back to Abadi's term as finance committee chairman, the Kurdish parties are also seeking assurance of their territorial claims outside the original Kurdistan regional government region, including the major city of Kirkuk. The Kurds won a written agreement on the intention of settling on the boundary dispute, having seized a number of those cities during the chaotic June ISIS invasion of Mosul. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports, seven men accused of wearing police uniforms and raping four women were sentenced to death by an Afghan court on Sunday in a speedy trial amid tensions of the undecided presidential election. In a speedy trial amid tensions of the undecided presidential election. The suspects, who appeared bruised and injured in the courtroom, remained silent as prosecutors read aloud their confessions to the rapes that took place near Kabul on August 23rd. Four women were returning with their husbands husbands from a wedding that day when 10 men dressed in Afghan police uniforms stopped their vehicles before beating, robbing, and raping them. The seven suspects were arrested Wednesday and quickly confessed to their crimes. Three other suspects are still at large. The court charged the suspects with the capital crimes of adultery and armed robbery so as to spare the victims the indignity of medical examinations or having to recount the incident. Before the trial was underway, Afghan President Hamid Karzai said he wanted the perpetrators of the crimes arrested and that he hoped the Chief Justice will give them capital punishment. Human Rights Watch researcher Heather Barr noted the Afghan track record of usually trying rape victims for adultery, but said the speed of the proceedings, the mistreatment and silence of the defendants, and lack of evidence makes this a show trial. She told the New York Times, In this case, the government has reacted, but has done so at the expense of justice. 
FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Wired.com reports, as the trial of alleged Silk Road drug market creator Ross Ulbrich approaches, the defense has highlighted the mystery of how law enforcement first located the main Silk Road server in an Icelandic data center, despite the computer being hidden by the formidable anonymity software of Tor. Was the FBI tipped off to the server's location by the NSA, who used a secret and possibly illegal Tor cracking technique? The answer, according to a new filing by the case's prosecutor, is far more more mundane. The FBI claims to have found the server's location without the NSA's help, simply by fiddling with the Silk Road's login page until it leaked the true location. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Sony released this week the Nasal HD 340s, a brand new pair of high quality nose buds designed to let users blast different scents into their nostrils throughout the day. The Onion let consumers across the nation sound off about their excitement for the new product. I've always got them in my nose. At work, at the gym, on the bus, wherever. These days, I can't stop smelling tennis ball. Retailing for $49.99, the nose buds accompany the launch of Sony's new online odor store, which sells over 22,000 different smells for download and immediate inhalation. Still, not everyone is quite as enthusiastic about the new product. These things suck. I mean, a lot of times it only works out of the right nostril. The other day I tried smelling picnic table. It smelled more like hardwood floor. And also, to be honest, I have a... Really hard time breathing with these things on. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You dial toll free here at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype on into the show. Our username here is lrn.fm. You do that, you'll sound better than the average caller, which is uh, so it's a good thing. So, again, uh, it's free talk live. We'll go right into your phone calls. Coming up, the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, someone outside of the freedom movement has been critiquing the pledge. In fact, it's psychology today. Uh, Derek J has a story for us. Actually, Mark, you brought the very same thing in tonight. So I did. It's, it's always a good sign when you know we don't we don't coordinate at all what we all are interested in talking about. We always usually just meet a few minutes before the show starts and uh, see who has what to discuss. And you both brought the same thing to the table, so that's usually a good indicator that we should go with it. But first, your calls, Greg in Brooklyn, New York. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek J, and Mark. Hey guys, how's Hi, it going? Greg. Good. Hey. What's on your mind tonight? Um, well, I called on Friday. I was talking about um, how there are, I think, some uh, legitimate uh, things that government could could be used uh, for, and more generally, when you might want to centralize things versus decentralize them. And uh, in my opinion, and I've been studying the subject a lot uh, because of the startup that I run, how to run organizations, and it basically boils down to this. People have uh, minimum expectations. Uh, which change from century to century or society to society. And if an expectation, the minimum expectation shared by a huge amount of the population, it might make sense for a single entity to go and uh, try to ensure that because then the costs of ensuring that go down dramatically because of economies of scale, basically. Like when, uh, for instance, the government uh, legalizes slavery. And, uh, you know, since a, a large enough percentage of the population thinks it's acceptable, they can implement uh, slavery more efficiently than if people tried to do it themselves. Well, I wouldn't exactly use that as, as an example, but property rights. Uh, bringing up slavery, I would say property rights would be an example of something that everyone is interested in uh, 
defending, and so that's government not true. provided court. No, for, first of all, that's not true. There are people who don't believe in property, so to say that everyone's interested in defending property rights would be an un- incorrect statement. And, and of course, um, one of the difficulties with property is even discussing it when the state is involved. If if one can, if an organization can demand money from you in order to secure your property, they are by themselves, uh, by their very definition, the uh, monopolistic thieves. Well, first of all, I agree with you that not everybody wants anything. I mean, some people pre- uh, prefer to be homeless, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are, you know, there's very uh, few things that everyone uh, will agree on. So my, what I'm saying is, though, is how uh, things o- get organized. There's an element of basically emergent phenomenon where it's not that uh, there's a legitimate uh, moral uh, reason for a government. It's more like it comes together, and if it will come together, what kind of things – would lead to better outcomes if it did. And those kinds of things all fall into one thing, which is that if enough people want it, if 90% of people need emergency room care to save their life, then that type of thing you might want to socialize the costs of. But not... Why? I wouldn't want to do anything like that. If I saw a bunch of people who needed emergency room services, I would go into business as a hospital. Or you could create a charity to uh, help people that can't afford to pay those uh, those hospital bills if you wanted to. Look, the problem with what you're saying here is not that there aren't people who you know could use certain services and would benefit from those services, uh, or that there might be quantity discounts or bulk buy discounts available in the marketplace for large groups of people. But the thing is, when you're forcing people into a bulk buy discount, that becomes a problem. Uh, it, you know, if you're forcing people to pay for services they might have a moral objection to, uh, that uh, becomes a problem. I have a, f- a moral objection to forcing people to do anything against their will uh, that you know they're not in- interested in, in joining with. So if it's such a great idea, if let's just say the emergency room care or whatever, something that you think is very important, if you think this is such a great idea, then why not put together some sort of voluntary association of people that can come together and negotiate? Like, uh, what, doesn't the AARP do, do this to some extent? They negotiate for all of their members to get discounts on things uh, in the marketplace. Sure. So you could do the same thing, and then everything you'd be doing would be completely consensual, and you wouldn't have to put any uh, guns to anyone's head. Or, I'm sorry, you wouldn't do it, Greg, but the police would certainly do it. Well, sure. Instead. And again, right. I mean, like I, like I said last yes. time, there's uh, two different discussions here. One is if you want to maximize the benefit of the outcomes, uh, then that's sort of the utilitarian approach. If you talk about morality... Or, or forcing people, that's a completely separate discussion because... Well, it's also your opinion you about what's the benefit, right? Like the person who is setting up the uh, the government program that forcing people into it, they're saying they know what's best and that they're going to force everyone into what they think is best for them because they know what's best. But what if the other people who are getting forced into the program have a different idea about what is best? What if they want something that's completely different from what they're being forced to uh, to support? That's not taken under consideration, is it? Well, yeah, there's a legitimate concern that once you put the machinery of government in place, that it could be hijacked by special interest groups and uh, force people to do things that uh, are not necessarily uh, things that 99% of people need. Uh, I'm talking about things that legitimately at this point can be shown that 99% of people want their life to be saved uh, when uh, they have something that needs emergency care. I, you know, that's not something that uh, is really that uh controversial. Why do you, but what's controversial is putting a gun to somebody's head and threatening them with violence if they don't want to go along with your brilliant plan. I mean, you do see that that's that's wrong, right? uh, But Greg, of course, of course, 90, 99%, 90% of people wanted cotton picked in 1860. Um, at the, the, that's the point of what Free Talk Live does. I get where you're coming from a utilitarian standpoint that, yes, the majority is largely going to get their way because they can rip, they can eviscerate the minority. They have the power of uh, of, of size on their size. Generally, right. that's the and case. That's why you need well, to, by the way, that's why you need to protect civil rights as well. You need the government to limit itself. That's very important. As well. but, but How's it, that working it's out? It's never going to do out. that, and you know that. The government is an organization no, of if power. if you put Greg in charge, they would really that centralizes. No, Greg, Greg's got a great point here. His point is of emergent technologies, and that's true. But what, you, what you're what you assuming is, is that technology emerges linearly. And I disagree with that point, Greg. The fact is that things change. Man went from being self-directed to being uh, horse-directed, and he sat on a horse, and the horse went where the horse wanted, even though the
the man tried to direct it, to being self-directed in a car. Like, things went differently than um, along that linear progression. And what my claim to you is, is that Free Talk Live, as a voice for morality, not for practicality, mm -hmm. um, claims that people should be able to have singular volition. Yes, the individuals, the hoi polloi, they'll always ultimately get what they want after they have begged their masters long enough. Likely they'll get it, and I think they should someplace else leave me alone well i think the morality and the practicality actually go hand in hand i would disagree with the greg's characterization here that there's some sort of choice between you know economies of scale and forcing everyone into the same system and having freedom and freedom of choice uh, i think that you get uh, better economies of scale better service when you have freedom yeah, absolutely. It's more practical and more moral. Yeah, right. I mean, Greg, you're here advocating putting people in uh, in a prison cell if they don't want to go along with your program, and it's just not okay with me. Oh no, no, I'm not. Yeah, you uh, are. I just want to. Well, uh, are, let me wait. Aren't you way. taking I, these positions yeah. because you believe in them, or are you just you know taking the positions uh, no, for the I, purpose I, I of do. taking them? I I am at, no, I do believe in it, and in the sense that um, I'm asking myself the question: if we do have government, which Anywhere, an organization has to be run somehow. There has to be a management somehow. So if we do have uh, a constitution or something, how do we actually set it up? What should it do? And it took me a long time to figure out what is common to all the things that legitimately seem to be um, lead to better outcomes. And it seems to be only the things that most people, an overwhelming number of people need. So most and people so would like to have a roof over their head. Government. Most people would like to be protected from the elements. Sure. sure. Uh, would you say that most people then should expect that the government provide them with shelter? Well, I would certainly argue that the government should um, take away a lot of the means-tested welfare that they have and replace it with unconditional basic income that would certainly provide for a minimal shelter minimal food minimal water and everything mm -hmm. else so that people and if can i don't want to uh, and if i don't want to contribute to that program then what should happen to me well if you run a business <clears throat> a business and your business gets a license to operate in a particular jurisdiction and that comes with a contract and i don't have a license the I license, license doesn't come with a contract the license is we will kill you if you put your business here and you haven't yeah. gotten our licensure i mean that's not a contract exactly well, you know if you're going to use vo force against people greg you should at least own it you should at least own up to it i thank you for the call tonight the uh, toll-free number is 855 450 free it's free talk live you want to be a dictator own it I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, September 8th, 2014, gold opened at 1264.30. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 13.1047, 655.23 for a half ounce, or 327.62 for a quarter ounce. That's 13.1047, 655.23, and 327.62. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. 
You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you're invited here to bring up whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Is PayPal going to be embracing Bitcoin soon? We've got some details on the headlines that you might have, might have seen around um, the internets uh, today. And it's good news, sort of. It's getting there to be really good news. Getting close. Uh, MyMagicMud.com. Mark, you've been using MyMagicMud. I have been using MyMagicMud. Derek J., I've seen the jar of MyMagicMud on your shelf. Have you had a chance to uh, to crack into it yet? No, I haven't used it. I'm I'm, I'm a little afraid. Are um, you? Yeah. <laughs> like, I've got my... Because I'm almost out of my regular toothpaste, uh, and when I'm out, no, you don't then use I'm going to switch. You don't want to use this every application. Uh, oh, okay. We have failed to inform you properly about how to do you that. You could, though, right? Well, no, you did say that, but I just sort of wanted to do it my own way. Well, <laughs> I don't know the answer. Um, I, I tend to follow instructions as I'm given them, uh -huh. especially <laughs> by the products, people that created the product. Um, I suppose you can do whatever you want with it. It is by no means the least costly way to brush one's teeth. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it's uh, 150 applications for 25 bucks. Yeah. And what I was told by the, the people that created it, uh, Jessica Armand, she's a homeschooling mother of three. And she created it, and she said to use it every application for between a week and 10 days. Hmm. I'm sorry, uh, once a day um, for between a week and 10 days, and then go every other day after that. Okay. I generally do every day to every other day. Well, if that's what the other... creator says, then uh, that, that makes sense. I'll do that. Okay. But it's, lo it's a lovely product. It's actually a tooth powder, not toothpaste, and it's black. Indeed. Which seems kind of counterintuitive. How could something black actually make your teeth more white and that's one of the one of the things that uh, that this product does is a tooth whitener it's tooth whitener it uh, it cleans your mouth uh, in a way that it polishes your teeth and cleans your mouth in a way that i think will be very surprising to people because i've never experienced anything like it yeah they say it also reduces sensitivity as uh, as well and, indeed uh, it's an amazing product uh, you can go and get your own jar over at mymagicmud.com and that's also where you can listen to some audio of, was it Dr. Griffin Cole, I think is that's his right. name? That's uh, right. Where he talks about some of the benefits of, uh, of the product. But really, we're seeing our listeners posting about the benefits in the Free Talk <laughs> over Live and and over forum. again. <laughs> yeah, so. It's like a snowball. Once, Because I think some people think, ah, you know, radio guys, they'll say anything. You guys are money. full of it. And right, of course, we try our very best not to do that here yeah. on Free Talk Live. I mean, I, 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 I've tried it. It works for me. This is my experience. Yeah. I wouldn't lie to you, but uh, you know, as people see these testimonies coming through on the Free Talk Live Facebook page and the Amplifier page, 
they are uh, more and more motivated. Of course. Uh, so it's working for people, and that's why people are commenting about it. MyMagicMud.com. Indeed. And they take, pay- uh, they take uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. There. Indeed they do. Yes. All right. So uh, we, we still have to talk about the Pledge of Allegiance here mm-hmm. in a little bit. Derek J. has that story he'll be sharing with us. But I just felt like you know, we should continue to comment a little further on what uh, the gentleman Greg in New York was having to say. Because after the or after the segment was over and we were in the middle of the break, we were kind of continuing to have a discussion about him. And it's frustrating when people who are obviously intelligent, like, you know, Greg's no dummy. I think he's a great caller. Right? He's always got smart-sounding calls. He's, uh, he's not a dummy. And he right? listens to input. It's not like a brick wall where he's just got his ideas and he's not going to listen to any of yours. So yeah. he takes some in. and uh, We have to feel like a brick wall, right? He, yes. Like, we yes. have to feel that way. We are ideologues. You know? Yeah. Well, and so is so is he. Um, you know, his ideology is a different one. And He's that much is that, more practically based, though. Then well, what? I don't know if I agree that uh, it's well, practical we, to buy things all in one big bureaucracy um, because I think that makes things very inefficient. That's the conversation that um, – like, well, the problem is with practicality is, is that you can almost never win the argument in having conversations with people about practicality of government because, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, economies of scale and that sort of thing. But one thing you need to understand is that big rewards big. Uh, when it comes to economies of scale, is that big governments want to do companies do business with big companies? Big companies like big companies. They don't mm-hmm. want to do business with small companies because they just don't know how to interact with them. Mm-hmm. I've had this happen several times with advertisers. It's like send me an insertion order and over your contract and, and um, you know all these things. I'm like, are you going to buy these ads? Do you want these ads? Because I'll run them for you. And I don't have all this mm-hmm. stuff. I can generate it for you if that's what you need, but. They know. They get the feel. Yeah, my wife slash business office manager will get that information to you (laughs) when she's put my son down for a nap. You know, like they know what's up. (laughs) They can get the feeling. And so what what you're doing when you're talking about big government is you're instituting fascism every time, all the time. That's all you can do. And by fascism, I mean uh, big corporations, uh, big, uh, you know, uh, government, the marriage Corporations and government. That's what fascism is to mm-hmm. me. I'm not talking about the, uh, the the racist aspect of fascism that has uh, cropped up along the way. I think that's where Greg gets um, derailed because I, I know I, I'm speculating, but this is the way I thought for a little while. It's like, oh, well, economies of scale. You know, I learned a little bit of economics in college, and it makes more sense that we mm-hmm. all buy in our health insurance all the same. We all benefit from that because, um, you know, I pay f- less of a rate now and I don't know. You you get some benefit when you buy a lot of stuff, and people don't always want that. Maybe I want the freedom to not buy health insurance, and well, so I don't true. benefit from that economy of scale. It's true that you do, you know, if you buy in bulk, you get a discount, right? If you buy the big long sandwich at the sub shop, you'll get a better price per inch than you will if you buy the shorter sandwich. I mean, that's all true. Yeah, so it seems practical, but it assumes I want the sandwich. But... The thing that is missing is that uh, if everyone were to buy things from one sub shop and that one sub shop were the only shop that was in town and that's the only place you can go and get food, you're going to see that the prices are going to go up and that the service is not going to be so hot because they know you can't go anywhere else. So even if you are buying all from the same group or whatever, if that's the only group from which you can buy – you're not going to get a good deal from uh, from that group, even if everyone is throwing in money. And that's what we're talking about with the proposal of government-run health care is one source from which people can purchase and or and are forced to purchase a product. And the idea that that's going to somehow result in efficiency is ridiculous. It sounds like these stories I heard about the Soviet Union where people would go um, back before the empire fell and they would go to the grocery store – and have to choose from just can of soup, mm-hmm. like bread. Bread lines. And, you know, that was it. You you didn't have all these choices of Wonder Bread or Pepperidge Farm or whatever A lot of people found it di- very disconcerting when they uh, switched over from communism to capitalism. Is, is that yeah. Too like, many choices. It could be shocking. Two types of pickles? We, we can be know, paralyzing. I remember we talked to somebody who was telling us about the former Soviet states afterwards and what things were like there and how the different Soviet states kind of handled uh, – 
the, the changeover. Some of them were more friendly to the marketplace than others. Estonia was mentioned as one of the more friendly to the marketplaces. And the de, you know the, the description we had from this former Russian person or Estonian person. Well, Greg, was, by the way, is from Russia, too, and he probably oh, could speak to that. I didn't oh, know that. I believe so. so I believe that's um, what he said. Anyway, uh, the story was that they, you know, like a, a McDonald's opened up and people would go in there and have no idea what to do. They would stand there and not like, like what? Huh? a menu. <laughs> I mean, they, they were used yeah, to standing seriously. in lines for hours to get some moldy, stale bread. Yeah, and you only have one choice. It would be like one of those people who's only seen one brand of pickles in their entire life just saying, like, well, we get economies of scale from having the same pickle yep. company. <laughs> How dare you want choices in your pickles? Well, the pickles are a little rotten, but it's an economy of scale. <laughs> Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And, and again, that ignores all of the morality question as well. And, and to me, that you know, if you're presenting the immorality of putting a gun to someone's head and you've got someone who is saying, well, but that's what we need to do. We have to put guns to people's heads because it's for their own good. That's probably not a good prospect for freedom, at least not at that time. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. This week, badly shaken researchers reported observing an osprey stalking, killing, and devouring an adult male lion in what is being called a massive food chain shakeup. Confirmation of the three pound marine bird consuming the 400 pound feline has biologists scrambling to determine the new predator prey connections between the planet's billions of organisms. We seem to be experiencing some sort of cross species dietary free for all. Scientists say that the killing of the healthy, full grown lion by a typical osprey specimen has lent credibility to research reports of a deer seen grazing on a nest of squirrels in Wisconsin, as well as a claim made by a group of Japanese fishermen who say they witnessed 300 million krill devouring a 40-ton humpback whale. In other news, NASA acquires the moon for an upcoming Kennedy Space Center exhibit. A radio DJ invites the whole town to some bullshit, and assuming the many universes theory of quantum mechanics is accurate, the review you've just seen will remain relevant in another reality for all eternity. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. Free speech is protected on the internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999, and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. 
See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. With you tonight, Ian here. Derek J. And Mark. Don't forget to join, uh, join Derek J. on his website, derekj.me. And there is some fundraising going on for a couple of guys who were allegedly involved with the Silk Road the Silk Road is a uh, underground marketplace where all kinds of interesting things are available for purchase, such as drugs that in a lot of places are considered illegal. And so, therefore, the FBI targeted Silk Road back in October of 2013, took the site offline, and then arrested a man they accused of being its operator, Ross Ulbricht. You can donate to his uh, campaign to raise money for his defense at freeross.org. But Ross isn't the only person who was alleged to be involved with the Silk Road. There's also Andrew Jones, who is a Free State Project participant. He is someone who, like the, those of us in the studio, has signed the pledge at the Free State Project's website at freestateproject.org, which, by the way, now has over 16,000 signers, 16,000 people who, like Andrew, pledge to make the move to New Hampshire and get active for freedom. Unfortunately, Andrew won't be moving anywhere anytime soon because he's currently on house arrest, 24-7 lock, uh, lock-in in his parents' house, essentially. Uh, as he's awaiting trial for some pretty serious uh, criminal charges of conspiracy to commit hacking, uh, to money launder, and to distribute drugs. He's facing the rest of his life in prison, and he sure could use your support. If you think this is uh, an insane war on drugs and you want to see it end, then you should really consider supporting Andrew Jones at DrewsDefense.org. If you support the Silk Road and you support freedom uh, to purchase whatever product you want to, This is a pretty important case. So DrewsDefense.org. Maybe he wasn't involved with the Silk Road. Nobody knows. He hasn't been found guilty yet. Uh, But they sure do want to go after this guy. And he's never been accused of actually hurting anybody. No one has ever said they were a victim of Andrew Jones. It's the state that's coming after him. And uh, you can support him. DrewsDefense.org. As we continue here talking about explaining the ideas of, of freedom to people who have it in their heads, some sort of grandiose scheme to make things better. Well, if we would only change this about government, if we would only have this program, because people need stuff, we need to take care of them. They're expecting to be taken care of, and so we need to have government programs to take care of people. I mean, well, don't you want to help sick people and help old people and help poor people? Are you just callous? Don't you? Are you libertarians? You don't want to help people, do you? I think that kind of thinking is a status trap for smart people because, like, people like Greg or they want to figure out how to fix the world. There are Mm -hmm. some serious problems here, and if I could just figure out what they are and adjust them with these levers and knobs that government gives me, I'll make everything okay. So he's trying to make the case of, like, this is how we do it, but I think he's wrong. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. And you meet so many smart statists, right? Like these people who are just mm-hmm. brilliant at figuring out how to control you. And uh, they want to be the farmers on the human farm. They, they won't wanna, think about it that way, no, though. But, but they want to control the other people because we know that the world is full. I mean, half of the population has an IQ under 100. Let's be serious mm-hmm. here. So, I mean, do humans need management? They do. As far as I'm concerned, they do. Do they need government? As far as I'm concerned, they do. The one thing, the one caveat I would cre- would 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 state is is that look, competition is generally good. Competition brings us innovation, lower prices, better customer service, so many things. And all we need is competition in governments to provide people with huge leaps forward. Because really, when it comes down to it, statism. The, the idea that government's going to solve problems is just, it's one tiny little step forward, one tiny little step forward every 50 years. 
What's the really? What's the ultimate well, difference? Well, hold on a second. I mean, that's not true, right? Because ultimately, government creates more problems than it solves. Oh, oh. So, I, I'm not talking about that. But the steps forward, I'm saying, is is in the human condition. Uh -huh. And I would suggest that the step steps forward in the human condition come They're from in spite of government. In my opinion. innovation, they come from uh, you know inventions, technology, these yeah, kind of things. Usually in the spaces the government where takes, government doesn't exist. But the government takes credit for all of this stuff. Mm. It, it, I think it's arguable that democracy or a republic or whatever terminology you wish to, to uh, describe it with is, is uh, was a step forward. But the idea that somehow the best form of government was created 230-something years ago and that we're not going to see anything better than this is really <laughs> ludicrous. Yeah, the next obvious ridiculous. step is competition. It used to be that people couldn't live together that were of different religions. They just couldn't do it. Well, why in the world? Now they can. They live just fine on the same streets together. Mm -hmm. Why in the world? And people have different insurance companies. They different have different cell pro providers. They have different guns. Why can't they have different governments? And by that, I mean an organization that's going to pro provide them with some level of protection, the kind of protection that they want and demand for themselves. Well, the reason why they can is because uh, the state would not have it no other way. I mean, they want you in their system because you're funding their system and their pensions and all of that. There's a lot of money involved in the, the state as it currently exists. And to allow people to simply opt out, which would be the solution. You know, like the idea we were talking, I think you were talking on the Sunday show um, with Rich Paul, who called in from jail about uh, sort of being a steward of a child rather than an owner as a parent. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea being that once that child is ready to take on responsibility as an adult, that they should be allowed to do that, that they should be allowed to break free from the uh, the, the shackles of the parents, uh, the controls of the parents, if they think they're ready for it. Maybe that turns out they're wrong. They come back to their parents and then, all right, well, now you got to follow the rules again, kid, if you want to live under our roof, that kind of thing. Uh, so why couldn't the same thing be true with a government where, you know, you're born into the world and there's, you know, your parents have this government that they might have hired to do whatever it is they would have a government for. I don't know what you would want one for, but Marx insists that people want it. Um, so, you know, there would be still presumably people that want some sort of governmental service. So obviously their children would be under that service as well. But if the child has decided they would prefer a different government service at some point, they should be able to change that or opt out entirely and, and be a self-governor. It's well. too dangerous. Just one person breaking free of the state and having freedom would ruin it for everybody. Well, that's well, really the problem sure with the monopoly system, isn't it? Yeah. If you allow one person to get away with it, then the whole thing essentially is in jeopardy. This is the reason, essentially, that police officers will ultimately pull you, will kill you in order to pull you over to give you a speeding ticket. Mm -hmm. If you don't pull over... Then, you know, pretty soon lots of cops will be behind you. You still don't pull over. They'll start, you know, Running trying to put road. up roadblocks, maybe shooting at your tires. Helicopters will be involved. They have to stop you because you must obey. Yeah, and if you don't, it's the death of the state, right? The death of the idea of obedience. If they're like, ah, well, we got his license plate number, you know, whatever. We'll just send him a ticket. <laughs> you know, they can't, do, they can't do that. It's the obvious choice. Yeah, you know, I'm in, I'm in pursuit, and I've, I mean, I got a license plate number. What do you want me to do, Chief? Kill him! You know what I mean? Because yeah. it has to be the choice. <laughs> and it's uncomfortable for the intelligent statist to admit uh, that that's actually what they support, that through the, uh, the desire to have these wonderful programs that are going to take care of people that are funded by force, you have to ultimately put a threat of violence behind them. And at some point during his call, he did cop to it. But it's very difficult to get somebody to really embrace the idea of, yes, this is what I need to do to fund my program, to make my dreams come true of some sort of society where everybody is taken care of. It has to be backed by the threat of force. It has to be backed by violence because they don't want to have to use violence on people. They really don't. Do you want to do this they... the easy way or do you want to yeah. do it the hard way? Yeah. They don't want it to come to that, but they know ultimately in, in, in their heart of hearts that that's where it's coming from. It seems like most of politics is uh, shielding the truth of language, like sanctions. You know, like yeah. they, they, we, we use code Euphemisms. words. We're going to starve your poor people in order to teach your rich people a lesson. Yeah, that'll work. Right, <laughs> but, but uh, Greg or anyone, any educated person could sound like they know what they're talking about when they say, well, we should impose sanctions. That sounds like mm. a legitimate, uh, reasonable offer. But, you know, then you consider that 
that's actually hurting people. That's uh, hurting innocent people. It's Maybe horrifying. it's not a good idea. Wait, right. You're absolutely right. In fact, there's a book that Daryl Perry publishes on his website, fpp.cc, called The Double Speak Dictionary yeah. uh, by Star O'Hara, I think is her name. <laughs> I read this when I was in jail, Daryl, uh, for civil disobedience. Daryl sent me a copy of it. And it's a whole list of those things where it just goes through all these government euphemisms for violence, essentially, and kind of gives you the real definition of what the word actually means. Like you were saying with, with sanctions there. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We'll come back with more. You can share your thoughts. More. Uh, co- well, actually, we'll talk about the Pledge of Allegiance coming up on Free Talk Live. At the Home Depot, buy one or more pallets of GAF Royal Sovereign three-tab shingles and save up to 20%. Let's raise the roof but lower the cost with bulk pricing on GAF, America's number one shingle. Featuring advanced protection technology. This is worth shouting from the rooftops. Let's do this. Up to 20% off one or more pallets of select GAF shingles. More saving. More doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Valid through September 17th, U.S. only. See store for details. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The human body is extraordinary. Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of hb extract it's extremely effective and it starts working in just days visit hbextract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers and we've never increased our price in over 10 years that makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it a healthy heart is a happy heart call 866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the Ideas of Liberty Daily. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. It's Free 
Talk Live, and you can take control toll free. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We're talking about uh, people who are really intelligent and are unfortunately applying their intelligence to coming up with ways to control people. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of that out there, and uh, we'll come back. A lot of it in Washington D.C. A lot of them everywhere uh, out there. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Many of them are aspiring to be in a place like Washington, D.C., uh, but they don't have the political capital to make it happen, so they just, you know... Root for the other guys. Sort of ...put their ideas out there and hope they get picked up. Um, but you can bring up anything that you want here on Free Talk Live. The Pledge of Allegiance, I uh, would like to talk about that here in a little bit. There's a story from Psychology Today where somebody is actually questioning... The Pledge. Uh, looking forward to hearing more on that. Your calls are certainly welcome on whatever happens to be on your mind. And, of course, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Coming up, Keenvention. You can go to keenvention.info and get registered for the second year of Keenvention. Uh, it's going to be happening October 31st through November 2nd. So it's coming up in less than two months at this point. This is crunch time uh, for Keenvention. And uh, there's still a few panels that have yet to be announced. So please stay tuned over at Keenvention.info for the latest. You can go there right now and you can actually go back and look at all the videos from last year. You can watch Derek J. and I talking with Chris Cantwell about uh, violence versus peace and uh, the legislative panel, the direct action panel. We had so many great discussions and great speeches that were given last year and it's all preserved and it's all free you can just go and watch it as it's as almost as good as being there but not quite as good because if you're actually there you get to meet these people you get to you know talk to folks and connect with the activists up here in new hampshire and, and that's what keenvention is all about it's about bringing attention to the activists who to me these are the real superstars these are the the celebrities there's a lot of great conventions that the libertarian movement puts together and the free state project does a couple good ones uh there's the liberty forum in wintertime and the porcupine freedom festival in the in the summer but both of those uh, they they invite big name libertarian speakers from all across the country these are people who in a lot of cases are the thinkers of the movement but they're not the doers and the doers are here in new hampshire they're getting active there's over 1600 people here now as part of the free state project and we're going to highlight some of the real like names the people who are on the ground boots on the ground out there whether it's legislative or direct action we're going to cover all those topics and it's going to be i think it'll be enlightening and fun as well because uh, we always like to have the social side of uh, of the event and derek J, you're in charge of the uh the, the, the costume contest that's going yeah, to be happening that's right yeah i, don't, I won't uh, share too much about it but yep. just that it's going to I, happen yep on we're, gonna, we're gonna have fun on friday it's a halloween night it literally is happening halloween night so i think that's going to be extra spooky and uh, an extra good time so i'm looking forward to that me too go to keenvention.info you can get registered there get your tickets for a credit card or bitcoin 60 dollars worth would be appropriate and that'll get you in for the entire weekend uh and there's something else that's different about keenvention is we don't you know, not only do we not bringing in like outside speakers, which increases costs of running an event. Usually, if you're bringing in outside speakers, you've got to pay them airfare, put yeah, them up in a hotel. hotel room, that kind of thing. Uh, we don't have to do that with King Benchins. So we can keep the cost down. Plus, we don't do the in hotel banquet dinners, which you commonly find at uh, conventions. Mm -hmm. And those things are nice because you know they kind of give people an excuse to sit maybe with people they don't know yet. But if it's a small event like Keenvention, you get to meet everybody anyway. It's an intimate affair. There's only about 100 people that attended last year. And so you really are already kind of intimate with folks. And so really just folks just go out on their own volition to different places in town. So you get to mm -hmm. get get a flavor of Keen, go out and go to some of the local restaurants with folks. So you get out of the hotel as well as spending time inside the hotel. Keenvention. Go to Keenvention.info. Let's go to Cliff. He's in Nashua. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Cliff. Hey, how are you guys doing? I was trying to find a sports station, uh, one of the ball games or football games tonight, Monday Night Football, and I happened to turn the dial, and I got lucky, and I just heard you guys, and I was venting on Facebook today, and I was just, uh, a lot of these topics was on were on my mind, and I was just wondering, who, who with the primary tomorrow, who are you guys um, endorsing, or who who do you think is, uh, I was listening to the um to the debates that that was just on WMUR recently. So I, I don't want to go into New Hampshire politics simply because we're doing a, an international radio show, and I don't think it'll be particularly interesting to talk about which candidate versus which candidate. But there are some resources uh -huh. in New Hampshire for people who like freedom, uh, who want to know like what are the best options. 
I know there's a yeah. new website called LibertyBallot.com that, for whatever reason, is only focusing on Republican races as far as the, the freedom-oriented choices in the Republican races. I think that's unfortunate. I'd like to see them expand to cover all of the, the different options out there because, for instance, in some Democratic primaries in New Hampshire, you do have liberty-oriented candidates. I'm running for governor, as a matter of fact, so there is an option there in the Democratic primary. But, uh, you know, there's obviously different races to talk about, and this isn't really the right venue for for sort of local political discussion. But check out LibertyBallot.com if you're in New Hampshire. That might give you some info. Uh, and that's okay, that's where I would any, start. Do you know, are there any libertarians uh, on the ballot do you know of? Not in a primary. There's uh, Libertarians generally handle their elections um, <laughs> across the country internally as far as a primary goes, decide who's going to be where and who's not. Well, good for the um, Libertarians on that point because it actually doesn't cost their primary, if you will, when, when they, what they do is they, they meet – and this is true everywhere, not just the Libertarian Party – or not the New Hampshire Libertarian Party. It's true across the, the, the United States. Uh, when the Libertarians get together at their annual convention – that's when they pick who their candidates are going to be. So they don't need the government to run an election for them to decide who's going to be their candidate. They just do it all internally, and so therefore all of the costs are borne by the party and the party members rather than the taxpayers, As which it is should essentially be. What, right. what a primary is. Uh, but as a quick answer to your question, I'm going to take Jim Rubens tomorrow. I don't even know who that oh, okay. is, and nobody yeah, in our audience that, yeah. really has any uh, really cares about that, Mark. Hey, Cliff, I wish you the best out there. Thanks for listening to Free Talk Live. Hey, welcome. welcome. I, I did a little bit of research while I was waiting to get on, and I seen you guys had moved from Sarasota, and I'm glad I— you know, I'm glad I found your channel, and I'll try to listen more. Oh, great. You must be listening to WSMN down there in Nashua. And, yeah, we're there every night, and so thanks for tuning in. And yeah. call us anytime. And and when you call next time, you know, let's talk about an issue. Let's talk about something that's important to you. I realize the election is important to you, but it, has, it is important. I, ideally, it should be also important to somebody who's listening in California or in Cameroon, Africa, or something like that. So keep that in <laughs> mind next time you call in. Thanks, Cliff, for the call. Okay. I appreciate okay. it, man. Right. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. I actually just posted to the voters guide for Keen on freekeen.com but you know it wouldn't make sense to go into the details of who and why here on the air cuz most of our audience cannot vote for any of these people. Yes. Uh so the the toll free number is 855 450 free. But aren't you going to vote? Derek J is it? Did I yeah. hear you talking about that last night with Bill uh, Bupert? Yeah, and I was I was uh catching some criticism for that because Oh yeah, he was saying an... it was immoral and oh, violence. Come on. As an anarchist, you know, I struggled with the idea of voting Voting at all. I never voted before moving to New Hampshire. And mm. my first vote. Even back when you were uh, like working for Greenpeace. Yeah, I huh. still never registered, never That's went into a, a, a ballot area or anything. But my first vote ever was cast for Ron Paul when I decided to move here uh, to New Hampshire. Oh, okay. And that was in 2012. So that was fun. And uh, then my second vote was for you. And then that's Aww. that's it. That's all I've got. That's my voting experience. <laughs> and uh, Well, at least you don't feel like you've got blood on your hands, right? Because No, I always voted for liberty candidates. Yeah, yeah that's the nice who... thing about voting libertarian. You never have to worry about winning. <laughs> so, well, well but that's people, not true. people like really what libertarians have won in New Hampshire. Libertarians are winning left and oh, right. They're I just see. running as Republicans I and said Democrats. Voting libertarian. Uh -huh. I was oh. being specific about the party, and it's pretty rare that a libertarian wins anything. It's I think rare that's libertarians right. get on the ballot. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, but you can still vote for libertarians who are running as Republicans or Democrats. So exactly. I'm running as a Democrat because it would have been completely uh, a huge waste of time and money to run as a libertarian. I would have had to have spent $5,000. If I, if I didn't want to go out and collect 5,000 petition signatures all on my own, uh, which would have been a huge time-consuming task, which would have essentially been a full-time job. If I'd, if I'd spent 40 hours a week collecting signatures you know, for several months, I probably would have been able to get that done alone. But most people you have to actually hire to do that kind of work, and it's a buck a signature. So 3,000 signatures is the requirement to get on the ballot as a, gov as a governor candidate for libertarians mm. uh, or any third party here in, in New Hampshire. And it's, that's actually not bad compared to some states. Uh, but but here, you know, that's a lot of money. I don't have that money to, to spend on a, a political campaign. It's not worth it. Well, I used to see voting as immoral because it's essentially forcing other people to have the same opinion that I have. Like, oh, you want this guy. Well, too bad. <laughs> oh, you don't get him. I do I, have that that feeling. I, I do want to force other people to have the same opinion I do as long as the opinion is stop hitting people, stop shooting people, stop slapping them in the face, stop beating them over the head with nightsticks, stop threatening your freaking neighbor. 
Yes, I'm willing to force people to do that. I call it playground non, etiquette. Yeah, the, I call it the non-aggression <laughs> principle. Mm. And what I mean by that is, is you don't get to hit people unless they've hit you first. Mm-hmm. Like that's this the is rule. basic uh, preschool playground rules. I mean, I learned this a long time ago, but apparently a lot of people forget it when they get all educated and grow up. Well, there's propaganda that changes our language so that we get confused about mm. what stuff is really happening. And there's uh, indoctrination pledges, like the Pledge of Allegiance, Mm -hmm. which we can talk about coming up here in hour number three. Plenty of time as well for you with your calls. You dial in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. There's more Free Talk Live on the way. Oh, fall. A time for cooler temperatures and hot deals from America's Best Value Inn. Save 15% when you book a room online at americasbestvaluein.com and stay now through October 23rd. Plus, you'll enjoy free continental breakfast, internet, and instant rewards through our Value Club at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Fall into savings this season at America's Best Value Inn. Attention all listeners, are you ready for a free stock market webinar with PhilzGang.com? Join us September 13th at 12 noon Eastern for this live PhilzGang.com free webinar valued at $75. You'll learn how to protect your principal in this Federal Reserve controlled low interest rate market by identifying moves before they happen. To register, simply go to LearnStocksForFree.com. LearnStocksForFree.com. Or call 877-600-4264. Promo code GCN. 877-600-4264. Promo code GCN. FDR URL. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, September 8th, 2014. Gold opens today at $1,266, silver opened at $19.16, and Bitcoin is trading around $462.99. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillForTexas.com. Political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news, the Liberty Beat is announcing a new partnership with the Genesis Communications Network that will greatly expand the reach of the program. The daily news service will also soon be producing three updated editions each day. The program has evolved from a one-man hobby operation to a full-fledged news service that contracts with writers and producers from their office in downtown San Marcos, Texas. John Bush is the founder. We've come a long way in the quality and depth of our content. I used to exhaust myself running the program solo. Since bringing on Derek Rose and Catherine Bleich as writers and Brian Hagen as our voice talent, we've been able to take it to the next level. With our new partnership with GCN, the sky is the limit. Now you can hear the daily news service on the Genesis Communications Network and many of their AM and FM affiliates. The Liberty Beat will be included at the top of every hour during Free Talk Live, the Catherine Albrecht Show, the Nutra Medical Report, and will also be downloadable via the GCN podcast feed. Documents released by The Intercept detail a cozy relationship between a former Los Angeles Times reporter and the CIA press staff. Email exchanges between Ken Delanian and the CIA public affairs officers show Delanian submitting drafts and summaries of his stories to the CIA before publishing. While relationships between government sources and reporters is nothing new, it's largely seen as a violation of journalistic ethics to seek government approval for stories. 
In the emails, Delanian can be seen asking if changes were better and more suited to the government officials' liking. Bob Drogan, the L.A. Times Deputy Bureau Chief and National Security Editor, said sharing story drafts is not appropriate. Delanian told The Intercept that seeking permission for stories was a bad idea and stated that he shouldn't have done it and would not do it now. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern-style burritos. Now with two locations in Austin at 500 East Ben White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. Find them online, CaboBobs.com. And support comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, September 8th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. Controversial water fluoridation was the topic when activists from around the country met this past weekend in Washington, D.C. at the Fluoride Action Network Citizens Conference. Dr. Paul Connett, director of the Fluoride Action Network, will be in Central Texas this week to discuss the conference, sign books, and meet with elected officials to discuss the dangers of water fluoridation. Dr. Connett will first appear this Wednesday, September 10th, from 4 until 5 o'clock at a public meet and greet at the George Washington Carver Museum and Cultural Center. He will then give a speech at Brave New Books located at 1904 Guadalupe Street in Austin. The event starts at 7 o'clock. The third and final public event is a happy hour with Dr. Connett at the Rail Yard Bar and Grill in San Marcos, Texas. The event will happen Thursday from 5.30 until 7 p.m. Dr. Connett will speak at 6. William Binney, the former technical director of the National Security Agency, recently signed a petition calling for a new investigation into the attacks of September 11, 2001. Binney, who is also an NSA whistleblower, signed the Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth petition. Binney began whistleblowing on the NSA spying activities shortly after the 9-11 attacks and has remained a vocal critic of the Bush and Obama administrations. In 2005 and 2007, he became the focus of an investigation and harassment by the FBI. He was eventually absolved of any wrongdoings. New York City officials recently announced that 60 officers will begin wearing body cameras as part of a new pilot program. The program was part of a settlement reached in a lawsuit against the city's controversial stop and frisk program. Police Commissioner William J. Bratton believes the cameras demonstrate the department's commitment to transparency, and he expects the officers to begin wearing them this fall. And the Austin Unschooling Support Group monthly meeting is tonight, starting around 6.30 at the North Lamar Central Market location. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM, located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, September 8, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Researchers at Princeton University's Department of Sociology have made a major leap in our understanding of social interaction. We conducted trials in 90 supermarkets across the country and found that essentially 100% of people disapproved of having a stranger hit them across the face and then expose their genitalia right in the middle of the supermarket, which we found very interesting. Researchers observed similar reactions when the subject hurled shopping carts toward unsuspecting shoppers, stood in the deli section rubbing cold cuts against his chest, or got right near cashier's ears and began loudly singing Yankee Doodle. In this particular trial, we had our subject, Kevin, take off his shirt, tape a banana to his forehead, and charge at various shoppers like he was a rhino. Within 20 minutes, store owners called the police and he was arrested, allowing us to come to the conclusion that this type of behavior is still considered at least somewhat taboo. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You dial in toll free, ring up anything you want, and we won't ask much from you. All you have to do is give your name, where you're calling from, what you want to talk about. That's pretty much it. Oh, and how you're listening is what we'd like to know if you're listening to a radio station or to internet streams or perhaps not listening at all. Some people will, uh, will listen to the podcast, they'll listen to an archive download maybe while they're going to work, and obviously you can't call in while you're listening at a different time, but if you're you know, you want to comment on something you've heard us talk about in the past, you can do that on Free Talk Live. You don't have to, like most talk shows, 
you don't have to call in on the topic at hand at the moment. You can bring up anything here with you in the studio. Ian, with you. Derek J. And Mark. Hey, uh, don't forget you can join us on Skype as well as our toll-free lines. Toll-free lines 855-450-FREE, brought to you by ProXPN. Skype, username is lrn.fm. Just send a contact request first. We'll approve it, and it'll be easy for you to call from that point forward. Uh, so we were going to get into the, the story about the flag, mm-hmm. uh, the pledge, I guess, uh, more specifically. What have you brought to the table tonight, Derek J.? Well, did you say the Pledge of Allegiance, Ian? When I was younger? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there were times in my life when I did. But I remember as early as elementary school not liking it. Uh-huh. And uh, I would purposefully change the words around. Whoa. So I would change the words to like pledging allegiance to the USSR or things like that. <laughs> like, you know, stuff that I didn't really know what it meant. But I was just, I didn't like to say what they wanted me to say. Just throwing a wrench. And so I would change yeah. the words. Ladies and gentlemen, he was born this way. <laughs> it seems like it. I truly, I mean, I, I, all of the evidence I have is that I was always sort of an anti-authoritarian. What about you, Mark? Did oh, you yeah. say it? Oh, yes, Hand absolutely. Hand over the heart? And relished it. I mean, oh, really? Yeah, well, you, I mean, I'm that personality type. You were like, I did it the best every day. <laughs> I stood up made, and looked up. and Or it made your heart swoon, heart. that kind of thing. Like, I, well, <sighs> patriotism. Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm the kind of person that they're <laughs> aiming for, you know? Mm. <laughs> like, they want, A sucker. They want them. Well, you can call them what, they, what you want. <laughs> uh, you know, they, A dupe. In, in the military, they call them bullet catchers, right? Like, you want that person that... Uh, uh, you know, is going to be there to catch the bullets when it mm-hmm. need to be caught. Um, and yeah, somebody who's you're will just saying die that, for a greater cause. You're saying that the uh, the apple pie, the flag, all that stuff, like the the, the star spangled banner, that stuff all worked on you, right? Yes, just as it's supposed to, as it's intended to. I mean, this right. the pledge of allegiance is really an indoctrination uh, chant. Well, that's that's a socialist indoctrination chant. That's what I'm getting at. I had problems with saying the Pledge of Allegiance, too, back when I was in school. And I remember back to elementary school, I finally stopped saying it. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. all throughout. I remember being like, this is weird. I don't like this. But, you know, so much of school is this is weird. I don't like this. I'll just go along to get along. Mm. That I just thought nothing of it. That it's just like every other part of school that I hate. But um, at this, some point, I just stopped participating in it at, uh, at not participating, and I got in trouble for that. Well, I didn't have the courage to be the first in line to do that. But in 11th grade, I remember distinctly seeing someone else not standing up for the pledge. How did that feel? It was cool. I was like, they're not standing. I probably don't have to stand. Look, the teacher's not doing anything about it. I could probably do this tomorrow. <laughs> and I tried it tomorrow. The next day, I didn't stand, and some snitch pointed uh. out. They're no. not standing for the pledge to me and the other the other uh, student who was a girl, and the teacher said that's fine. He didn't care. You know, he was one of those like I don't care what happens in my classroom. Light things on fire. I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> but um, that was so freeing, and yeah. I never said it again. After that, I was like, this has been weird. I can't believe I said it the whole time. You know, I think that uh, we can talk more about the pledge, but just as yeah. a tangent from that, I think that the example you're giving of being in ennobled. By the the courage of the first person, yeah, the person who took that first step, they you know stepping off the cliff into the unknown. Uh, oh, it's not so bad after all. Uh, you decided to jump on board the bandwagon. It was a small bandwagon at that point, but you you know you were a joiner at that point. Yes. and now you have uh, become a leader, and uh, you have I think set that same example for other people through your activism, uh, through civil disobedience, for instance. Um, and and it can be as simple as what you're talking about whether it's somebody who's not standing for the pledge or not standing for a, a man in a robe, a judge, mm-hmm. uh, when they come into a, into the room. I mean, uh, we've seen this happen before where we'll be in court, and if there's activists in there, in at least in Keene, they generally will not stand for the judge when, uh, when he or she comes in uh, the room. And sometimes you'll hear audible gasps yes. from other members of the uh, the audience. Hey, this, at this point, it's just ordinary. No, yes. no, they don't even uh, they don't even say "all rise" anymore in the sometimes they don't. Today it's, they didn't say it when Judge Bird came, and, came right. and left. They didn't even say "all rise." Uh, you know, people just stand and sit as they please. Yeah, and so uh, that can be something that is encouraging as well. And I've seen that happen. I've seen it where if you have enough activists in the courtroom. Now today we didn't. There were a lot of just mm-hmm. Regular folk there who were there for arraignments, and then there was maybe you know half a dozen or so uh, activists, and the number of course grows as time goes on, as people get up out of bed and <laughs> manage to make their way down to court. Uh, Stagger in, but uh, but I've seen it happen where we've had a majority 
of the audience in the courtroom. Yes. And and numbers change everything. So if it's just me sitting down in a courtroom full of people, that's not going to encourage anyone else to stay seated for the most part. But if you're in a courtroom with 20 people in it and 10 of those people are activists who are not going to stand for the judge, when the time comes for people to stand, all rise and half of the audience stays seated, that's the time when you'll see other people not really rise up as much or just stay seated entirely because they're going along with what they perceive to be the majority at that point. Yeah. It's, ennob- it's ennobling. And isn't that interesting? So humans are like social creatures, and even when sitting across a table from one another, they might mirror each other folding arms or uh, whatever the sort of body language is. People sure. sort of trend along that. Like you mentioned, people sitting. If they see most people sitting, that's what they want to do. So it takes a lot of courage to be the first person to do something different and especially something like saying the pledge which is supposed to be noble and you're supposed to do it in yeah the you're a bad person yeah there are people listening to this right now M- <laughs> mouth mouths agape in yeah. fact hold that thought let's go to patrick in new orleans listening to wgso hello patrick hello uh, i want to talk about the pledge please i'm All right. stepping up I'm 70 years old. I'm a disabled Vietnam vet. When I was a child, my elders had been through the Second World War, and I heard over and over again that freedom isn't free. It costs blood. Over my 70 years, I found that that's correct. It costs blood if you want to be free. The sweat off your brow, it isn't cheap. Freedom is not cheap, sir. Um, Under God, that's another thing. I've got some folding money in front of me, and it says, in God we trust. I've got a little bit of uh, knowledge about the history of my country. The most of most of the founding fathers. Now I'm not saying eighty percent or seventy percent. I don't know what it is, but most of them were 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 uh, preachers. Hmm. They, they, were, they were ministers. We are founded upon a country that that, that believed in God. I thought they were lawyers. We were founded. We were founded upon a, a uh, country, a nation that believed in earning their way. Patrick, I'm a little confused. Are, what does what you're saying have to do with the Pledge of Allegiance exactly? You were making comments about blood earlier uh, for freedom, that kind of thing. What's that have to do with the Pledge of Allegiance in your mind? You pledge to the flag, which is the country. No. The flag is a, uh, uh, and, it's a piece uh, of cloth. Uh, and you know, you're, you're pledging allegiance. Do you know what allegiance means? I'll define it for you if you yeah, don't. Yeah, please tell me. Well, what does that mean to you? A league is a king, right? A liege? No, sir. No? No, sir. Allegiance is a uh, promise to uphold an idea. The king is an idea. Freedom is an idea. Country is an idea. And it's a terrible idea. Countries are a terrible idea because they divide human beings from one another. They create artificial divisions between people, and that leads to things like no, war sir. and destruction no, sir, and wrong. the aggrand- ag- aggrandizement of politicians and things like that. You're wrong. My country, my country is uh, 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 it's a piece of land that uh, we, we hold, and our piece of land is different than the piece of land in uh, uh, Iraq. Those people don't hold it. They fight over it. Hmm. I don't know if we I agree with you, United Patrick. I thank you for the call tonight. I, I see plenty of people fighting over this particular piece of land. What do you think politics is? It's fighting over control over this piece of land. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping 
make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade-grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Toll free number for you. 855-450-FREE. The Pledge of Allegiance. That is the indoctrination chant that we're discussing here tonight. Uh, you can share your thoughts as well at 855-450-FREE. Join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Join us online at freetalklive.com and get interactive with a variety of different features. The toll-free numbers here are brought to you by ProXPN. If you care about online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. You need to go and get it. It's free, so you can just go and grab the uh, software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices, and even Linux users can use ProXPN, though the setup's a little bit different for Linux. Uh, it's so easy to, uh, to get started proxpn.com slash ftl once you load up proxpn and you connect to proxpn they will then encrypt 
everything you do online, every website you visit, every search term you enter, all that information is currently likely being logged by your current internet service provider because you're not encrypted if you're not using ProXPN, most likely. And so use ProXPN, you'll be encrypted, and your ISP will no longer be able to pry and spy upon you. You can also get a sweet discount by using our discount code, FTL50, when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account. That'll bring the price down to the premium account on the annual version of the account to 5 bucks a month, uh, which is about, it's actually about 5 bucks a month. When I did the math, it was slightly less, like four ninety nine or something like that. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL to get started, and remember, code FTL50. That premium account gets you unlimited limited bandwidth, servers around the world you can access, private torrenting ability, plus you can get past regionally blocked websites. Plus, ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits, and you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Want an even better price? Pay with Bitcoin. Order the annual account, use code FTLBTC, and you'll get 62% off of the price of the annual account. Uh, it's an amazing price on privacy that is actually priceless. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. And again, use codes FTL50 and FTLBTC for Bitcoin buyers. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number here tonight. Uh, we just had a guy who was on the line, and he seemed kind of uh, he, he seemed upset. He, he was kind of coming from that position that, Mark, maybe you can... You can relate to because uh, you were sort of describing that uh, at one time in your past you were the guy who the pledge of allegiance worked on that you know it made you feel good to uh, to say the pledge it made you feel like you were special he was the caller earlier was alluding to this idea that well our plot of land's different and uh, we're we're better he didn't say that but that is essentially what I think he was uh, insinuating with his statement that well those people in the Middle East they're always fighting over their plot of land and over here we don't do that but well that's not true. For history buffs, I think that the important thing to look at the pledge is, is um, let's understand where it came from. It was created by a man named Francis Bellamy in the late 1900s. No, 1800s. 1800s, excuse me, 19th century. Late 19th century, um, uh, late 1800s. Right. He, um, he was a national socialist, like Hitler. Mm. Um, like, you know, the party, the party through Didn't he which— he call himself a Christian socialist? All right, he can. I'm, I'm sure they use those terms interchangeably, okay. but I've uh, certainly heard him referred to as a national socialist too. He developed the pledge. He was uh, he and his brother developed the pledge. Uh, the, I believe that one of them was a flag salesman, mm -hmm. and um, they they had a, a salute to the flag that's very similar to the Nazi salute. The hands in slightly different position, but you have this kind of. It's amazing. It's to creepy. See, yeah, I mean, it's amazing to see a schoolroom full of black kids Nazi saluting the U.S. flag, and there are photos of this. Out there. Just Google Bellamy salute. That's yeah. all you need to look for. That's all you need to do. Because this is what Francis Bellamy, it's his salute to the flag. Um, the, uh, Which he borrowed from the fascists. Yeah, Roman and, fascists. And there's nearly. And then Hitler then borrowed it from us. From, from the United States. Yeah. The United States is the birth, birthplace of modern fascism. There's no doubt about it. Um, and there's, you know, this is. This is the history of uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, you can say what you want as far as patriotism goes, but you cannot deny the history of the Pledge. And if history is important to you, then the origins of the Pledge should be important to you. Consider that Under God was, and, was added because of the Red Scare, what is considered largely to be a terrible time in U.S. history when the government goes around searching for people who might be communist sympathizers, um, looking under, you know, basically a modern witch hunt. Uh, I mean, all you need to do is spend a little bit of time researching this, and you'll realize this was a terrible time in U.S. history. I'm no communist. Got no, got nothing nice to say about communists. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't change the fact that you don't want witch hunts going on, no matter whom they're sur sur looking for. So the pledge is surrounded in bad history. And it should be honestly put away by patriots. If you care about what the Founding Fathers might have said, as the uh, gentleman who, who um, was a Vietnam War vet sort of alluded to, mm. you'll consider that loyalty oaths to the king were considered reprehensible. The way This that, isn't to the king. This is to the country. Well, it's an allegiance. And the term liege, unlike what he was uh, alluding to, is, uh, is uh, you know, the, the another term is lord liege. Well, you had said it meant king, but uh, and then he said it didn't mean king. It doesn't actually. It means lord. 
Well, it's the same thing. Um, <laughs> oh, what, didn't they have different lords uh, back okay. then? Like, you know, lords yes. of certain land, things You're like right. that? You're um, right. Uh, okay, so one can liege their way on up the liege ta- uh, okay. ladder, all right? But it's n- no doubt it means lord. It means that I shall doff my hat and bow before you so that you might lop off my head. I will bear my neck to the greater man. This is not... This is, I repeat to you, this is nothing that an American patriot would do. They would never swear allegiance. Allegiance to another man, but they're swearing allegiance to the flag, to the, the United States the of America. The Constitution itself says there shall be no titles. The term allegiance is abhorrent to American patriotism. It is abhorrent. I don't care how many wars you mm. fought in. Sadly, it is abhorrent. Well, then uh, you're saying that the idea of a citizen is abhorrent as well, then, right? Because citizens owe a duty of allegiance in return for an obligation of protection. And how because- many children who are saying the Pledge of Allegiance know the, what the word allegiance even means? Well, I know it took them. me years. This before is the I other even thing: knew. is is that why in the world would you indoctrinate children with this uh, the, this? A prayer to in a the same image. reason every religion indoctrinates their children with prayers and chants. Because that's all this really is. It's just a prayer to this idol. It's a chant. It's a creepy uh, cult thing. Well, Psychology Today is making that case. Would you like to hear a little bit about what they've said? Well, David Nose. I enjoy their articles there. They've got good stuff. They do. And uh, psychologytoday.com, David Nose writes, Headline, have you talked with your kids about pledging allegiance? Right, not about sex, but about the pledge. Mm -hmm. Serious issues arise when we expect daily pledges of nationalism from children. This could be as important of a conversation to have with your kids as the talk about sex. Yeah, and uh, more relevant for more of their life. True. (laughs) Uh, Are you a bad American if you refuse to recite the Pledge of Allegiance? Are you a bad parent if you encourage your child to opt out of the pledge in school? Not at all. In fact, the right to refuse participation in the pledge has been guaranteed by the United States Supreme Court. I didn't know that. It would be a mistake to assume that the Pledge of Allegiance is an exercise that somehow unites all good citizens. At a minimum, parents should talk with their kids about the pledge, about what it means and what it doesn't mean, and even its history. Thanks, Mark. Mm. For starters, kids should understand that the exercise is voluntary. Because many schools don't inform them of this. Yeah, imagine oh, no. how it feels if you don't want to do it for whatever reason, and it feels like you have to. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Everyone That's not what it. America's about. Yeah, it's, it's very clearly not voluntary for a lot of people in school. They will uh, be coerced. They will be threatened uh, by the teachers and the administrators, and in some cases, other classmates, uh, into joining in with the group and jo- uh, saying the pledge. More coming up here. You can share your experiences with the pledge. It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Does advertising on the Genesis Communications radio network actually bring positive results? Let's ask Thomas Baldrick from Free Strike Guy. Thomas, talk about customer service at GCN. GCN is extraordinary in how they take care of their customers. The bottom line, Free Strike Guy keeps advertising on GCN because it works. If you'd like to experience unbelievable customer service, call Lee Wickenhauser at 877-996-4327, extension 107. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. 
Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many way? different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who hey. 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 do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this. No, I have work today. This no, is you ain't going to make it. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimespree.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com, get interactive there, and get some free stuff like a pound of free coffee. Some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. Indeed. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get a pound, a free pound of shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica beans coffee. It's the best of the best coffee. It's BuzzBox coffee. But the thing that's uh, bu- different about BuzzBox is they care. They really care. Not only do they have uh, fair trade coffee, which I think that that's a sort of a meaningless term these days. They have created a co-op so that people can actually join up and have a little bit of land and really uh, grow coffee and, and grow their lives. I, I, I'm very skeptical of shade grown – or excuse me, of uh, – of, uh, fair trade. You like the shade grown. I like the shade grown. It's the fair trade I'm skeptical of because <laughs> I think that in a lot of cases it just sort of creates this uh, unionized coffee production situation and just keeps people out. It's, a, it's an exclusionary uh, system rather than inclusive. Buzzbox doesn't run it that way. And also we're able to give uh, 5% back in microloans. So get your coffee that you, you know, you drink coffee every day. Get your coffee now. Get the better coffee, but coffee that's better for you and help people in the process. Give them a hand up, not a hand out, a hand up, by going to get your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, so we're talking about the pledge, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, which many of us were basically forced to do in school, forced through either overt threats or just kind of uh, the, the the coercion of the, the, the group, if you will, the, the way group dynamics work. And it's uh, it's indoctrination, straight up. That's all it is. It was written by a socialist back in the late 1800s. You can go and look him up. His name's Francis Bellamy. There's a Bellamy salute. I posted a link to the Wikipedia article about the Bellamy salute on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. That Wikipedia article does have photos of American school children doing a fascist salute uh, to the flag, which looks a lot like the Nazi uh, salute. In fact, the Nazis apparently borrowed it from the United States, from what I understand. 
Uh, and so there's this kind of nasty history behind the the Pledge of Allegiance. The average person, I don't think, knows. They they didn't teach me this in government school. That's for darn sure. And Derek J., you're sharing with us a Psychology Today piece, which we're going to continue here in a moment. But first, let's go to Bobby listening in Kentucky, I believe. Bobby, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Uh, I was going to say, do you all really think that there's not, not having no alliance to the country that you live in that allows you to, you know, have radio shows such as you do? Uh, I mean, I'm not saying you should, like, like, like he said earlier, bow our heads and stick our neck out for, you know, the, the king or the lord or however he, put, he you know, interpreted the, the allegiance, but... You know, like you said, patriotism has to step in somewhere with this pledge. Well, hold on a second. Let's slow down for just a moment. Look, I am grateful to live in a place where my lieges will allow me to yammer on into a microphone and take phone calls from people without, for the most part, interfering. However, those uh, very same lieges will demand that you pay your uh, your fees to them in order to have the ability to broadcast. We don't do it directly. They don't license individuals anymore to broadcast, but they do license radio stations, and the average person cannot afford such a license. They cannot afford to start up uh, their own radio station through the legal system. So it is not free speech here, and the FCC is certainly nothing to be uh, proud of in any way, shape, or form. Now, your other part of your question was about having some form of uh, sense of patriotism. Is that right? Do we lose you, Bobby? I think we might have lost Bobby. Yeah, I think that... Comments uh, on patriotism, gentlemen. Well, I think that I, I'm, I'm as grateful as anybody to live in something like the 20 to 30th uh, freest country on the planet. Um, I mean, you know, the United States has... There's been lists, uh, economic freedom, social freedom, freedom of the press, and sadly, the United States, which was the birthplace of, uh, of these ideas... Well, I don't know the birthplace. Yeah, yeah uh, the first place that it was sort of tried, I guess. Um, not sort doing of. So, not doing really very well on these lists anymore. I like, I think the, the freedom we have left in this country is the freedom to complain. And you can believe I'm going to do that as every other freedom gets taken away. I'm going to complain about it. Mm. I think that this country is going in the wrong direction, not the right direction. And I think that patriotism rewards bad behavior on the part of government officials. Patriotism is allegiance to the government, not to a country, because the politicians run the country. I can have, if I have allegiance to Walmart, I essentially have allegiance to the way it is run. And that's what it comes down to. The government is a group of people that are supposedly providing you with a service. Now, it's a mandatory service, and they'll kill you or throw you in jail if you don't want their services, or if you refuse to pay for their services, I should say. Yeah. But that's what they are. You shouldn't really have allegiance. I, I mean, I'll, I'll talk to you about this idea of patriotism. I think it's kind of ludicrous. I think it's an outdated, outmoded uh, idea. I think that it had but, value at one point to get people behind each other, um, you know, to, to sort of create this this oneness. But I don't. Doesn't it create ethnocentrism? Basically, the idea to some extent that we're the best. This this land's got the best people and the best ideas and the best everything. And and uh, got to be honest, it's not the best in every way. It's not. In, in the United States, as you're pointing out, Mark, the U.S. dropping on the rankings of economic freedom, dropping on the rankings of journalistic freedom as well. The Reporters Without Borders yep. report. Uh, what are we, number 40 or 30 something? Yeah, there? it's I mean, terrible. It, I hope it's not a biased report. I tend to feel like it. But, you know, maybe, I'll go crazy. The United States is the 15th pl- uh, freest place on the planet. It may be the wrong definition, but I think patriotism to a lot of people just means more or less like allegiance to your fellow man who you live around, your neighbors. It's not so much about countries as it is like your neighborhood. And, hmm. and I want to make clear that it's 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 really concerning that uh, the caller seemed to equate reciting the pledge with being a patriot. I mean, like if if patriotism is about serving your fellow man and looking out for your neighbors. How is reciting a pledge doing that? I've never heard patriotism defined that way. Well, it, it means almost father, always has it means something to do with fatherland country. in Latin, with the patria, just father. So it seems like, you know, where your people come from. Uh, patriotism, according to the Wikipedia, is generally speaking cultural attachment to one's homeland or devotion to one's country. Normally, mm. 
Yeah, I, mean, I guess so. So it is country. It has to be country-related. I, I think related. that there's something wrapped up in there with yeah. the sense of the community that they believe that their community is better because they're in this country that has these things mm-hmm. that we should be appreciative of. Uh, of. And I, I think it's important to appreciate the good things that we do have. And it can certainly be a valid critique of this show or many shows on on talk radio that you know you don't appreciate enough what you do have and that you're always talking about the bad things going on out there there's a lot of bad stuff happening and you know you guys focus on the negatives too often maybe we should just uh and, and i think that there's also this message that's not really explicitly stated is that hey why don't you guys just shut the f up things are just fine right. here <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> our freedoms are diminishing every day um well not every day but freedoms are diminishing over time that you can see the country is going in the wrong direction not the right direction they're sp- the politicians are spending us into insolvency they're they're essentially enslaving our grandchildren or great grandchildren with their debt but you should love them for it because flags, eagles, and F-18 flyovers. Mm, we're the best. Well, the, yeah. the future... And the rocket's red glare. <laughs> oh, gosh, no. I mean, the... the... <laughs> The future is with the children, and if children are reciting these pledges, uh, yeah, that's a that's a concern for people who think that like serious participation in the exercise would require a child to make affirmations that they don't believe in that the child doesn't even know, or maybe mm-hmm. they go against the their own core beliefs or their family's beliefs. Well, right, as you or pointed conscience. out, they're, they're affirming ideas that they don't even really have a grasp on yet, and yeah, it's, that's that's problematic just indoctrination. That's rote uh, memorization and regurgitation of propaganda. It's unhealthy. That's all it is. And, you know, maybe you could make it more obvious by replacing the object. Like, what if you took the flag out of the holder and you put something else in its place? Right. Anything anything at all. You know, put it. I pledge allegiance to Budweiser and, you know, the United (laughs) States of America. And it just, just... It's just so absurd. It's obviously, to us now, because we're on the outside of this paradigm, it's obviously this icon, this thing that people are revering. And it's really just a flag. It's just a piece of cloth. More coming up here in a moment. Share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. If you need to say happy birthday, happy anniversary, thank you, or simply I'm thinking of you, ProFlowers.com is the key. ProFlowers has stunning bouquets, like the best-selling 100 Blooms for $19.99. Plus, ProFlowers will include a glass vase for free. Sending someone a wonderful surprise of beautiful flowers sent fresh from the field is easy. Choose the bouquet you like, pick the delivery date, and each order is 100% guaranteed. Plus, all bouquets from ProFlowers are guaranteed to last at least seven full days. Beautiful, fragrant flowers, picked fresh and sent to your loved one for lasting enjoyment. To get this incredible savings and send someone 100 gorgeous blooms with a free vase for $19.99, go to proflowers.com, click the blue microphone in the top right corner, and enter code PLOW. That's proflowers.com. Click the mic and enter code PLOW. Anyone can publish on the Internet, but not everyone is publishing material suited for online reading. According to the Yahoo Style Guide, it cautions that Internet content has a few seconds, three or less, 
to encourage people to read more, to take action, or navigate to another one of your pages. So make it easy for readers to pick and choose. Isn't that the way you poke around online? Use short words, short sentences, short paragraphs, bulleted lists, and short pages. Front load what you write, putting the most important information at the beginning of headlines and paragraphs and sentences. Same goes for your keywords. What someone would likely type into the search box on Yahoo or Google. For more tips on communicating better online or in a job interview or everyday life, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Your comments on the Pledge of Allegiance. What were your experiences growing up with the Pledge? Uh, were you somebody who rejected the idea of the Pledge and were somehow punished or uh, threatened over that, as many of us said, you know, happened to us in a government high school and elsewhere. You're welcome to share your experience, 855-450-FREE. And don't forget, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. If you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, then you can support the show by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. It's five bucks a month. You can, uh, we'll take that money in and invest it into Free Talk Live, using it to get on more radio stations around the country, bringing new internet listeners on board and expose people to iconoclastic ideas like this. I mean, if you're enjoying this conversation and you want more people to hear it, then please become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. You will get perks like access to the amp-only call-in lines, the amp-only uh, forum, the amp-only Facebook group. Go to amp.freetalklive.com. Derek J., let's continue with Psychology Today's piece on Have You Talked to Your Kids About the Pledge? Yeah, well, there's all different kinds of families, and some believe in God and others don't, so the under God clause is problematic for them. Uh, there are others who don't believe that the country provides liberty and justice for all. I know that's part of the uh, pledge that tipped me off to mm. say, like, oh, I'm not down for this. I don't think that there is liberty and justice for all in in the U.S. That was not even you know, close. As, as a uh, stubborn, you know, uh, goth becoming teenager in in high school, I was saying I don't want to be down with this pledge. Uh, I don't I don't think that they um, do what they say, uh, provide liberty and justice for all. And then also, what's more important, by the way, if you're pledging allegiance to the flag and the United States. And that somehow you're also pledging to you're the pledging? idea of liberty and justice for all if the United no. States becomes... You're pledging to the republic. We should be clear about our language. You're mm-hmm. pledging to the republic for which the flag stands. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, so it's not the liberty and justice for all, right? That's It's the republic. And the flag. No, to, I we, pledge allegiance the idea to is the flag. flag and, oh, right, and the, the republic. The idea is that the republic embodies those things, though, okay. right? And yeah, I if, guess it's, so. if it's clear that it's not embodying those things, at which point do you remove your allegiance? Yeah, you're like, hey, you're not standing for liberty and justice well, anymore. The Bellamy's wanted to include more things in the pledge. If you'll read right. the, in this article, they want to include other oh, things really? in the pledge. Some extra fluffy words that 
uh, you know, their friends and people they uh, talk to sort of said, yeah, you know, no, we don't really want to do that because it sounds too much like you want the black people and the women treated the same as the rest of mm. us. And <laughs> so, I mean, you know, there is a history of exclusion already in the pledge wow. itself. All right, let's dig in further. Okay, so uh, for any humanist family, there's uh, numerous issues relating to the pledge that are worth discussing. So a few of them. Uh, the loyalty oath problem. No matter how much you love your country, you could question the wisdom of any recitation that essentially amounts to a loyalty oath. Mark sort of got into this earlier. Uh, to be good citizens, we must visibly and publicly pledge our allegiance? And even children must do so on a daily basis? It's interesting uh, that the Founding Fathers never felt it desirable to promote such loyalty recitations from their citizens. Mm -hmm. In fact, the right, pledge came along 100 plus years later. Yep, wasn't even written until 1892, a full century after the founding era. Uh, the framers, as men of reason with enlightenment values, most likely would have been aghast at the idea of citizens being expected to regularly recite a loyalty pledge. Mm. Sounds true. Because, uh, you know, they fought a battle against uh, the British about all this. I assume that's the, the stories I well, hear. The, the United States, <laughs> the United States um, well, I should say the colonies um, over here in North America, there was huge, uh, there's a huge list of rebellions that went on prior to the Revolutionary War. Yeah. And a lot of them had to do with these loyalty oaths. These loyalty oaths are a trick. Well, how I'm, so? I'm not kidding you. This was what, the Pledge of Allegiance is a trick. For what? Just like the rest of these loyalty oaths. Because. You believe your word means something, don't you? Yes. Ian, you believe your word means something. When you say something, you believe it, I'm right? I'm only as good as my word. I believe it, too. That's what middle-class people like us think. That's what the lower-class people like, uh, you know, people lower than the ruling class think. That's what the ruling class counts on. They want you to recite loyalty oaths because they believe your word is worth something. They believe that you believe that your word is worth something. Mm. They, on the other hand... They will practice diplomacy and politics and these other terms that mean lying, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> they won't even use the term lying because they know that the, no one will believe that they use the term lying. So they use terms like politics. Yeah. You know, they, they're politicians, which is a term that is synonymous with liar. But somehow Americans and people around the world will allow themselves to be ruled by politicians. They would never allow themselves to be ruled by liars, thieves, mm. killers, um, sycophants. They would never let that happen. Let's go to John. He's in northern Minnesota listening to WNMT. Hello, John. Yeah. Uh, what flag are you talking about? There's two different flags. There's one with the red, white, and blue, which are the three colors. And then there's one with the four colors with the gold on it and uh, uh, the two-headed bird at the end of a stick. <laughs> I love that one because it's like adds a little extra something to the flag. You know, I don't want to pledge to things. either flag. I'm not interested in well, pledging yeah, to yeah. anyone's government. Yeah. Oh, okay. But what, what is the, what is the uh, gold and the, and the two-headed bird stand Why don't for? you tell me? I think it – doesn't it look like the epaulets on uh, like a captain's uniform? Go yeah, ahead. It, give it, us what it, it means. Uh, it, it, I, I heard or uh, read some places where it said it's, it's the martial law and it does not represent the United States. Yeah, there's a conspiracy theory out there about the gold fringed flag. That if you go into a courtroom and they've got a gold fringed flag, that it means you're actually under admiralty law and you're not under the common law anymore, and you need to get out of that courtroom. And it's you only need to the get... one side of the bar, though. Oh, 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 well, that's, why they call a mag... that's why they call them magistrates now. But they had ma magistrates in ancient Rome. And, you know, and we had one of those flags in church. I remember we even uh, we said the see, pledge yeah. in church too. And uh, was it, it had a gold? gold fr yeah, gold it had fringe? gold fringes in the the, the eagles yeah, at the top. They're in on it. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they they're all in on it. The, and the people wanted to take it out. Some of them wanted to take it out. John, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing okay. from you. I really don't uh, concern myself with conspiracy theories like that. To me, okay. it doesn't matter whether there's a gold fringe on the flag in the courtroom or not. Uh, the man in the uh, the man in the robe is going to. He's going to ruin people's Brain lives orange. regardless, and I thank you for the t uh, the time and the call tonight. Was he saying I was brainwashed? I couldn't make out what he was saying. I didn't hear him. Toll free right. number 855-450 free. Let's continue. Though. Another problem with the pledge is that it promotes nationalism. Wow. We can love our country while still being skeptical of nationalism. The article at Psychology Today writes. We can agree that America is a marvelous place from sea to shining sea and that the principles upon which it was founded are worthy of exaltation. But 
that doesn't mean we should constantly encourage widespread feelings of nationalism. History shows that national pride in America and elsewhere can be overdone, and it can lead to militarism. Yeah, it can lead to killing. And a diminished appreciation of outsiders. That's and, putting it lightly. And yeah. I'd say that this is the greatest thing about the country that we live in in the United States is that you, we don't have to be concerned with foreign wars. The, the likelihood of the great red horde from uh, Canada you know, sliding across the 47th parallel um, in order to uh, take over the United States, really slim, right? <laughs> like the only thing the Mexicans seem to want are jobs. Yeah. That's a good thing. Um, you know, <laughs> these are good things. Yes. Most wars around uh, historically and around the world have happened with, uh, oh, I don't know, geographic countries, geopolitical organi- organizations that are directly next to each other. We don't have to worry about that in the United States. The United States, sadly, its government, I should say, sadly has decided that it needs to run all over the world looking for wars because there just aren't enough at home. Well, I like what they say because I, I always believed this stuff about nationalism, but they're taking it from a psychology perspective, which I can really appreciate. Mm-hmm. They're saying nationalism can be seen as a manifestation of the human tendency toward tribalism and such we are so great thinking – is hardly an impulse that should be encouraged. I totally agree. So glad to hear a psychology magazine talk about this. Uh, Beyond our borders, our fellow human beings, whose worth and dignity should not be disregarded. As such, maybe we shouldn't instill in our children uh, a daily dose of national superiority. Totally agree. This is great stuff. Isn't this awesome? And I know we're not even close to being done yet, right? Uh, well, they've just really got two more major okay. bullet points. The, the uh, third is r- the racist and sexist roots, which, again, mm-hmm. Mark uh, touched on. Liberty and justice are fine values, but they're hardly a comprehensive statement of important American values. When Francis Bellamy, a socialist, originally wrote the pledge, he considered including the values of equality and fraternity in the recitation. But... As Mark pointed out, he was discouraged from doing so. Too many Americans, particularly in leadership, were opposed to equality for women and African Americans. So do we really want to continue saying the pledge uh, when it had these kinds of roots? What was number four? Number four, the under God problem. We all know oh, that no was one. added in That's 1954. That's the most common objection to the pledge, but it's sad when you see atheists. Uh, they understand that that part of the pledge is bad, but they're totally fine with pledging their allegiance to the state and worshiping the state. And uh, hopefully some atheists will, uh, and humanists or whatever, will open their eyes to that one. Hope but, so. Uh, your religion is the state. If you want to be free of religion, you'll need to free yourself from that one, too. We'll see you tomorrow night. Online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Stop. Free Talk Live. They have to pass a law that all the guns that are currently there have to disappear in a puff of smoke. <laughs> That's what they have to do. Oh, wait, you mean the bad guys won't actually give up their firearms when the authorities come around well, no, to confiscate them? It doesn't them? really matter that they won't give up their firearms because we're going to pass a law. Oh, that... because we pass a law, they'll just all disappear. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, it's just amazing how powerful laws are. Yes. How just it's Laws striking. aren't a bunch of dumb crap written on paper. They actually do something. <laughs> it's really, really stupid. What will be stupid is if they vote for y- it. Y- yeah, if, if they take taking our away- guns. <laughs> y- you know, these criminals with the guns are going to kill people. Yeah, they you already know? are, apparently. And if you don't have a weapon of your own, <laughs> you're just as good as dead. Once the laws go into effect that there shouldn't be any weapons anymore because then they know that the good people don't have weapons. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. 
The latest episode of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, September 8th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.23 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,267 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $469. Antiwar.com reports Iraqi Prime Minister designate Hadir al Abadi has submitted his proposed cabinet to the parliament, beating the September 10th deadline for submitting such a list as required under Iraqi law. The cabinet list has not been made public, but is expected to include both Sunni Arabs and Kurds in an attempt to try to form a unity government. Whether he's actually got the support of either the Sunni Arabs or the Kurds remains totally unclear. So while some reports suggest a tentative plan to hold an election as early as Monday on the cabinet, the date of the vote could easily slip to allow a body to try to assemble more support. Most of the details of the negotiations, as with the assembling of the cabinet itself, have been conducted in private, and that makes it hard to tell exactly where everyone is at on the plan. Kurdish officials, however, made clear that their part of the negotiations have effectively stalled. In addition to disputes over oil revenue sharing dating back to Abadi's term as finance committee chairman, the Kurdish parties are also seeking assurance of their territorial claims outside the original Kurdistan regional government region, including the major city of Kirkuk. The Kurds won a written agreement on the intention of settling on the boundary dispute, having seized a number of those cities during the chaotic June ISIS invasion of Mosul. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports, seven men accused of wearing police uniforms and raping four women were sentenced to death by an Afghan court on Sunday in a speedy trial amid tensions of the undecided presidential election. In a speedy trial amid tensions of the undecided presidential election. The suspects, who appeared bruised and injured in the courtroom, remained silent as prosecutors read aloud their confessions to the rapes that took place near Kabul on August 23rd. Four women were returning with their husbands husbands from a wedding that day when 10 men dressed in Afghan police uniforms stopped their vehicles before beating, robbing, and raping them. The seven suspects were arrested Wednesday and quickly confessed to their crimes. Three other suspects are still at large. The court charged the suspects with the capital crimes of adultery and armed robbery so as to spare the victims the indignity of medical examinations or having to recount the incident. Before the trial was underway, Afghan President Hamid Karzai said he wanted the perpetrators of the crimes arrested and that he hoped the Chief Justice will give them capital punishment. Human Rights Watch researcher Heather Barr noted the Afghan track record of usually trying rape victims for adultery, but said the speed of the proceedings, the mistreatment and silence of the defendants, and lack of evidence makes this a show trial. She told the New York Times, In this case, the government has reacted, but has done so at the expense of justice. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Wired.com reports, as the trial of alleged Silk Road drug market creator Ross Ulbrich approaches, the defense has highlighted the mystery of how law enforcement first located the main Silk Road server in an Icelandic data center, despite the computer being hidden by the formidable anonymity software of Tor. Was the FBI tipped off to the server's location by the NSA, who used a secret and possibly illegal Tor cracking technique? The answer, according to a new filing by the case's prosecutor, is far more 
more mundane. The FBI claims to have found the server's location without the NSA's help, simply by fiddling with the Silk Road's login page until it leaked the true location. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. According to a groundbreaking study on anxiety disorders published this week in the New England Journal of Medicine, researchers have discovered that feelings of anxiety can be completely resolved as long as people think about them real hard. After studying subjects with mild to chronic anxiety disorders, we found that the best way to overcome mental stress is to isolate the root of the anxiety, analyze it from every possible angle, and then think about it nonstop until it completely disappears. Researchers worked with numerous subjects in the middle of high stress scenarios and said the key to overcoming anxiety is to start by focusing on a minor problem, list everything that can go wrong in the worst case scenario, and then repeat that list in your head 200 times. After anywhere between three to six hours of perpetually torturing yourself over things outside of your control, all feelings of anxiety will completely disappear and you can finally enjoy the remainder of your day. This is the Onion News Network. We reconvene at Liberty Conspiracy Radio on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. If you're streaming us over the airwaves on the affiliates, thank you very much for carrying us and for listening to us. We come in after, of course, we come in after the mighty Free Talk Live. I am Gardner Goldsmith, and it's good to have fellow conspirators out there. Wherever you are, whatever time zone you call home, if you're inquisitive about the ethics, the morals, and the history of freedom. Well, you're in the right place, my friends. We have a lot to discuss. I'll open up the Skype line shortly. It is Gardner, G-A-R-D-N-E-R dot Goldsmith on Skype. And I would like to pass on my best to my friend Kevin Scott, a terrific writer over in the U.K., who has uh, he's written a great deal of material in so many different genres, uh, something that I will recommend to you, the listeners, right now. If you go to Amazon, if you go to Big Finish Productions or Amazon.com, uh, look up Kevin Scott's name, and you'll see some of his great audio work for Doctor Who and for Blake's Seven. Uh, some of the wonderful audios that uh, Big Finish has been doing since probably around 2002 or so uh, have been written by my friend Kevin Scott, C-A-V-A-N, Kevin Scott. I had a great conversation with him today, and I just want to acknowledge that. Uh, obviously, I doubt that he's up at 3 in the morning in the U.K., but um, I know that uh, – he might listen to this in podcast form. Also, I want to thank the members of the British Fantasy Society for their uh, terrific feedback to me and their hearty greetings from York, England, as uh, they got together this weekend and I could not be with them. My brothers and sisters from across the pond, as they say, um, and Kevin is, is also from across the pond. I just want to think of all those guys right now. Raise a toast to you guys. Thank you so much. And um, and I had a great time in York, uh, and I'm sorry that I missed the releases of so many terrific books by so many great writers. And uh, that reminds me, everybody, if you get the opportunity, take one more look at the book Bite. It's over in uh, Amazon land. You can check that out uh, in the U.K. if you go to pendragonpress.com I think or .co.uk just look up Pendragon Press and Bite that's my book I think you'll like it all right we've got a lot to discuss tonight including some more entertainment news that sort of ties into what I mentioned uh, last week about the uh, the ad sales going down for network television and for cable actually so I'll tell you more about that but uh, right now I want to get into the news and this one is not necessarily time-sensitive breaking news, but it's it's something I wanted to uh, bring up at the beginning of the program, make this more like a podcast. Uh, obviously, you know that uh, I'm friends with Stefan Molyneux, uh, and uh, I, I know the guys in Free Talk. Obviously, I was on that show as a, as a guest host uh, for a couple of years. Great, great people. And I love the format of radio, but I also like the format of podcasts, bringing us information that's a little more a little more uh, in-depth, something that's actually been laid out uh, to provide information, or conversations with people that are um, really good back and forths. Uh, 
So here's the subject. That's right. It's Pink Floyd time. Time for talking about money. Now, I promised on my Facebook page that, and you can join me on Facebook if you want to. It's uh, just LG Grande or Gardner Goldsmith. But um, I promised on my Facebook page that I would talk about the petrodollar. And there's nothing necessarily breaking some news story that I'm going to read from or, uh, Dateline from Reuters, you know, something like that with my news reader's voice. But I saw something this weekend that I thought, you know, I want to share this. I, I'd like to share this with you, the audience, because it's a discussion of a term that I think gets bandied around a lot. And very few of us, I know I, um, have really paid much attention to this. The term is petrodollar. And for a long time, I think we've often heard conversations from people on the news where they say things like, uh, say things like, well, you know, the United States is the dominant money in the world. You know, the U.S. dollar is the denomination that everybody uses, right? Right. So I thought, you know, I think I need to discuss why the dollar is seen in this way and, and what the term petrodollar means, right? Okay, so for that, we need another theme, which is an awesome one. This comes from the movie Cat People where a lot of people were introduced to Bela Lugosi's Dead in the very beginning with Bauhaus. And this song, which was later redone for David Bowie's album, Let's Dance, but the original version of it is much better. It's a minute longer with the drums, the backwards bongos. And his voice, so sonorous. Awesome. With that little background thing. What a song. So, okay. So, I want to discuss this and uh, get into it as, as much as I can before we have our commercial break. So if you're familiar with that term petrodollar, maybe you're like me and you haven't questioned it at all. I don't know. But I found out some information this weekend that really helped me uh, understand it and also really helped me, um, how would I describe it? Uh, really helped me put some pieces together. And this is about how in 1974, Richard Nixon, at the same time that the United States was going off its so-called gold standard, Richard Nixon struck a deal with Saudi Arabia and some of the OPEC nations. This is very interesting, and I think it sheds some light not only on why the United States dollar has held this position for so long as the world's currency, blah, 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 but also about United States military-industrial complex ties to other countries in, yeah, you got it, the Middle East. And often I think we have been told in history classes in the United States that the United States came out of World War II the world's only superpower. Mm, yeah. Not necessarily. Well, we know that the Soviet Union grew, and then it was the battle of the two super, superpowers. But the idea was that the United States was in a unique position. After World War II, incredible productivity in the United States, people getting back to work, and so on and so forth. And the United States dollar became the dominant means of transactions, right? Well, part of that had to do with the so-called gold standard. The United States was supposedly fixed, the U.S. dollar, according to the Federal Reserve, was supposedly fixed to a certain amount of gold. And at the time, the Treasury was the one that was supposedly printing up the money still. 
and yet the Federal Reserve was really in control of the money supply going back to the creation of the Federal Reserve. It would pump money out. But as you know, if you get uh, coins that were minted before, I think, 1964, there was uh, a lot more silver in them. You can still find dollars that are not Federal Reserve notes, you know, old-time dollars. And supposedly, the U.S. dollar was linked to a certain weight of gold, X percent of an ounce of gold, from Roosevelt's years on. But the problem was that they kept printing up more money. So what happened? Well, the U.S. dollar was seen by people who were savvy as being inflated. The, the amount of dollars out there was inflated. So it was going to take more dollars to get a certain amount of goods, like a certain percentage of an ounce of gold. So the fix on the gold level was not appropriate. Really, the dollar was worth less and less and less of a certain percentage of an ounce of gold. So people were turning in their dollars up through the 19, early 1970s to get the gold because they knew if they waited, they'd get less. We'll return and tell you more about this and the petrodollar. Important stuff, I think. Liberty Conspiracy. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Imagine someone in your community getting in their car, turning on the radio, and hearing the Liberty Radio Network. You can make that vision a reality with your own micro radio station. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how you can put our programs on the air in your area. You can have lrn.fm running around the clock, and you can even add in your own local shows. Building a radio station is simple, but programming isn't. That's where lrn.fm comes in. Learn more at broadcast.lrn.fm. That's broadcast.lrn.fm. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order are you going to display? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who hey. hey. do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no, no. Now. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimesPree.com. The three most important things you can do for LRN.FM are, one, let your friends know you're listening to LRN.FM on your social networking profile. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.LRN.FM. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program at AMP.LRN.FM. It's my firm belief that the AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented groups. Support all your favorite organizations, but make sure you give five bucks a month to the AMP program at AMP.LRN.FM. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. Yeah! 
This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. We continue with Liberty Conspiracy Radio on the Liberty Radio Network. Gardner Goldsmith here with you, and if you want to email me, it's libertyconspiracy at yahoo.com, libertyconspiracy at yahoo.com. Again, tip of the hat to Kevin Scott. I want to mention his name again. Sometimes you mention someone's name on the radio. And, uh, you know, the radio is, a, is an interesting all, – all of the oral forms of, uh, of information absorption are, are, are interesting in that sometimes uh, when someone listens, it, it certain patterns develop. Uh, or when someone speaks, certain, certain patterns develop where someone might tune out for a little while until they know that the pertinent information is coming. So I do want to mention my friend Kevin Scott, C-A-V-A-N, Kevin Scott. He has books. He's In fact, uh, he's going to be having two books coming out um, that I can just mention to you very briefly. I hope, I hope I'm not going to say too much. They have to do with a very famous uh, consulting detective. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, look for those in, in quite a while, you know, about a year and a year or so. One of them will be coming out. So I'm just I'm very excited about my, my friend Kevin Scott, especially for big finish productions. Uh, do a Google search and you'll find Kevin's stuff. Okay, I'm Gardner Goldsmith. Uh, welcome back to the program. I want to go back to my conversation about, oh, there it is. Yeah, cat people. See, I was saying. Um, and again, this is the really good version of cat people from the movie. Uh, the later version by David Bowie on his solo album wasn't quite as good because it didn't have those really cool backwards bongos that, and it didn't have the the Charlie Callis sound, which is a really really key sound. It's just like the weirdness coming in, you know, it's really cool. So I want to talk about the Petrodon. As I was mentioning, there's a whole setup to this Petrodollar thing popping up. I'll give you the answer. The background is the po- supposed gold so green. Now, why, why am I playing the theme for cat people? Because it's also known as putting out fire, otherwise known as putting out fire with gasoline. And then, of course, the sound, which is, you know, the Charlie Callis sound. I don't know if they hired Charlie Callis to do the sound, but it's very cool. And I'm going to continue to play it because I want to get to the Charlie Callis sound. See, it's very important. All of my production staff here in the Palatial G Studios are not going to stop playing the song until the vut 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 sound comes because that, those are my commands. And, of course, uh, you know, that's the way it's got to go. So, anyway, um, as I was mentioning, the term petrodollar is something that I think just flies right through us. It's, again, it's one of these oral signature things. It's whatever, you know. It's just the way things are. Oh, the United States dollar is dominant. And we were told a number of things in history classes in the United States that the United States dollar became dominant uh, after World War II because uh, the U.S. was the only superpower. It was very productive. You know, the workers in America were very productive and so on and so forth. Uh, Well, that is all fine and good. Uh, But one of the reasons that a particular piece of of currency, a particular type of currency – uh, becomes widely accepted by people is if you are if you have a free market, it is because it will not lose its value. <laughs> people don't want to get paid in something and then later say, "Gee, I'd like to go get a loaf of bread with this." Maybe it's a year later, two years later, or three years later, and find that it's only you know its its value has gone down nine um, percent. Let's say you know um, that sort of thing can happen in hyperinflation instances like in the Weimar Republic where you can, people wanted to get paid in the morning so that they could try to buy their stuff by noontime because they knew that if they tried to use their money later in the day it would be even worth less worth even less okay so oh wait oh here comes here comes this is the foot foot I, I have to stop I'm sorry I have, here comes it's Charlie Cowles this is very important See? See? Yeah! 
crap. See? I, okay, so maybe it's not a big deal to you, but it's cool. See, it's like it's the weird stuff that people put in songs. It's so good. You know, that has no meaning. It's just this sound. Like, people are sitting there like, hey, David, listen, I got this idea. I got this what, 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 what thing. And I want to put it in. David's like, hell yeah, let's do it. Or people are like, David, man, that song's okay, but the what, what, what sound that you put in there. And David's like, no, no, we're keeping the what, what, what sound. Maybe it was his idea. And they're like, right, wait, wait, wait. That song needs something. I want Vood 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 in there. You know? It's like awesome. It's sort of like the Hey Ho guys and all those rap songs when they talk about seeing them like scorn with a woman or seeing a girl's booty. It's like, Hey Ho! It's like they're just the guys that do they get hired by like all these rap stars and like, man, you know, this song needs something, dude. What does it need? Wait, how about the Hey Ho? Yes, the Hey Ho guys. We need the Hey Ho in there. Hey Ho! And that's it, man. I mean, you got... Oh, wait, wait. Here it comes. Here it comes. Wait. I'm sorry. I'll get to the substance in a minute. I got to hear book book. Yes! Did you hear that? That was awesome! Foot, 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 foot. Oh, man. So good. Freaking Bowie. Yeah, it's just good. Anyway, <laughs> I don't 